Welcome to the OSRS Podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators, a lot of JMods, and even more about RuneScape content. I am Mitt Matt Cow, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Riggs, as always. And hello, it's me, Rice Cup. So today we have three JMods. This might be the first time we've had more than one JMod, and also the first time that we've had six people. Oh, Probably. yeah. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we don't, like, you know... Talk over each other too much, but yeah, uh, we have three content developer JMOS, Mr. Husky, Mr. RK, Miss Elena. So these guys all produce some fabulous content for RuneScape, especially the past uh, few months and going forward. We have some crazy things that we're going to talk about from the development side. But yeah, hello yeah. guys. Hi. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so. Just to have a little introduction, so, since there's so many JMods, uh, if we could start with Elena, what, what do you do in, uh, at Jagex? Sure. Uh, so I'm a junior content <clears throat> developer. So that means I'm, I make cool stuff. I program, I design, um, l listen to feedback, and enact that feedback, really. Uh, so recently, I've been on stuff like plans and uh, combat achievements and deadman mode. And now I'm on group iron map. Ooh. Nice. Nice. How about you, Mr. Husky? <laughs> uh, a lot of similar stuff to Elena, actually. We've been on the same development team for a while now. I think the big difference is that while she was uh, busy working away on clans with uh, the awesome mod Ash, I was doing sort of the uh, unsavory stuff with equipment rebalance, which, you know, mm. since I'm last in, it's now it's now in. And then uh, I, I, too, did a lot of um, combat achievement stuff. Awesome. So. Awesome. And Arcane? Hi, I'm a content developer. I've been around for about a year and a bit now. Um, past six months or so, I've been working on combat achievements. I was on um, the Juggernauts team with uh, Husky <laughs> um, and Elena for a while as well. And then uh, I moved on to the Wardens and did some things like Top Hard Mode for Sally's Nightmare and uh, now Raise 3. Awesome, awesome. Glad to have you all on the most possible. I don't I feel like there's one podcast where we had six people on as well, or maybe it was like five. It was like Mika and Solo Mission. I can't remember. But this yeah. may be the most amount of people and definitely most amount of J mods only on the OSRS podcast. Right, Rexy? Hell yeah. I, I don't know what we've done to deserve free J mods uh evening, so thank you very much for coming on. And uh Welcome. if I can if I can ask real quick, just a general question. So it's a Friday today, and I was just curious because um when you guys are at the office, what are Fridays typically like at Jagex HQ? Is it kind of like a go slow day? Do you guys go out to the pub? Is it like how is it? How would you guys uh how what do you guys office? say it is? What do you mean? <laughs> when you're in the in the office, the what room cupboard. <laughs> I've not been in the office like I've been for an interview, and that was it. No, uh, and the really? summer, summer. Like we've not. The office isn't up and running pretty much right now. Oh my god! Wait, so you've never actually worked from the office since you've been employed I, I'm by Jagex? This chair, this chair is my life right now. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm like the only insane. one who can speak to that then. <laughs> That's your I, I, I was in the office for like a year and a bit before obviously we all start work from home and that um fridays were that was always that day where you were encouraged uh it was like a half an hour less working day was what you're supposed to be doing some people did and some people didn't you know as as it is but you were saying you can go home half an hour later earlier just say um and then uh every payday friday was pretty cool where they did like uh a, a basically like three or four pound all you can eat breakfast sort of spread in the morning in the canteen Ooh. which was pretty good uh i remember like taking up like a plate of like just like waffles for like everybody and be like hey i got all you can eat but here have some a bunch of waffles or something <laughs> and then you guys got, um, like runescape themed plates you eat off or no no unfortunately <laughs> not there's a lot of runescape stuff in, in the office though like um like and even like jagex branded stuff you know like mugs and all that um but the best the best part about the uh payday fridays was um it always used to be like um like sort of a beer friday sort of thing so they had like a, a bar inside uh jagex it wasn't used all that often like honestly but on that day it was like hey come down there's some, some just free spread of food food help yourself you know usually like lots of nibbles sometimes they do some quick like fun things from month to month to differentiate and you get help yourself to a free uh beer or soft drink or whatever you want like you know some people are maybe driving and whatnot but it was just a good time to come down and sort of chat and socialize and even see people from other departments uh, yeah. you know, usually working with. So that was it was good vibes. Yeah, oh, sounds, hey, sounds showing awesome. off, showing off. 
Are, do you guys have a date to when you may be able to work back at the uh, headquarters? No, it's not like, really. It's estimated next year that we start doing something, but whatever something is, is up for a debate right now. I have that a question. Is, uh, unfortunate. So, so regarding you guys is like you know work uh, room is it is it adequate to do things at home or no? Um, uh, I mean, I'm comfortable. It's a good chair, a good computer, like that's good. But it's lonely. Like you're just on your own all day, like every day. Mm. So, so do you guys go on Discord? Yeah, yeah great community. Yeah. Oh, yeah, God, do you guys yeah. go on Discord and like plan stuff on Discord and, and all that? Then? Yeah, we talk regularly. Uh -huh. It's not the same, though, is it? it, it it's gotten yeah. better, like, since the world started opening up again. Like, we've had, like, just, hey, does anyone want to go to the pub this Saturday and we'll just, like, chill and, and drink and stuff? And it, it's just nice to actually get to talk to people from work again in a more social manner because, I mean, as much as you probably don't want to be talking about work all the time outside of work, it's inevitable that when you're a group of Jagex employees working on old school, you just end up starting talking about work anyway. But it's it's much more fun to do that with a beer in hand than a... Oh, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, before we get into the really big topics, we want to cover a lot of the new Summit release, as uh, these JMods were definitely behind a lot of these big Summit updates. But our podcast has been growing. 8,000 subscribers, 2K to 10. We are almost the biggest old school RuneScape podcast. We are so close. And we have been hitting these goals thanks to our sellout program with me and Rakesy <laughs> dude, at the, the top of the sellout program here. Sadly, Rakesy cannot shave his head bald. I know his wife, or sorry, it's not your wife, right? <laughs> My fiance. Which so almost. Close. close. She likes the hair. She likes the ponytail. I, I don't know why. Um, but we do have a treat for you. Mod Arcane did say he would release some pretty top hidden information that has not been discovered yet uh, about Fasani's nightmare. So Mr. Arcane, if you would. Yeah, um, I know right now people, have, from what I've said, as well as the Runelight Project, where they kind of data mine all the drop rates and like figure it out based on the mass amount of information. But the pet being really rare and elite clues, because your drop rate depends on if you actually have an elite clue or not, it's not as easy to figure out. And I said I would release the pet drop rate if, what is it, you want 1,000, 2,000 likes? 3,000? We can aim for 2,000. 3,000? We were just, we just going to give him the, the drop rate just because Rakes, you got to keep his long, luscious no. hair. Let, let's let's do yep. a thousand likes and then Mod Arcane will tweet out the drop rate for the pet. From I, I can't say the hard mode nightmare name is Fasnosia or something like that. <laughs> for Sony, for Sony, that's the one. I I that boss is awesome. By the way, I love it. Uh, but I hate it too because I can't like I've killed that so word. much of it. I, I just had a bad day with it the other day. I went there and I did. I got two kills and died five times. And I was like, "Why am I? Me I've done hundreds of kills here. Why am I being so bad?" And like the boss, it just punishes you. Like you have to be on the ball all the time, or you will lose your sixty k GP. <laughs> like, and it's not even that that you care about. It's like it's when you spend five minutes killing that thing. And then you die. Like, oh my god, it's the most frustrating thing ever, I swear to god. But it's great. It's great content. So yeah, uh, let's do a thousand likes, and uh, we will have Mod Arcane tweet out the drop rate for, for Sony's Nightmare Pet okay. Drop. And, yeah? if we, and if we hit 10k YouTube subs, they get to tweet out the Raid 3 drop table, right? Is that what we're doing as well? <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick and that also sick. um reminder to anybody watching this podcast uh check if you guys are subscribed or not we would love to hit ten thousand subs that'd be absolutely huge and i mean we've gained i think two thousand subs this month so if we gain another two thousand next month uh we're on we're on track the first 10k podcast channel runescape related that'd be huge so please subscribe Huge. And speaking of huge, Dead Man mode, single plus, I believe, has just been renounced. I was watching on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of debates going on, and I just got to ask you guys: Do, do we know is single plus going to be in Dead Man mode or not? Uh, it's not. Apart from at Revenant Caves, where like it exists in the main game now. Uh, that's 
yeah, we're just going to make um, it's going to be as it was. Um, ex- the only difference is that the PJ timer that ha- you know, so that you can't be attacked by another player. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've been attacked recently, NPCs are going to respect that. So it's not like if you escape, uh, it's just a quick, you know, NPC attacks you like the second you're out of combat. It also has to wait the uh, 9.6 okay. seconds, which seems like a fair compromise. It was like the one big piece of feedback that like we decided, no, we're going to we're going to keep it as is. But, um, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons to it, but it was just that thing that the community just kept kept talking about. And I mean, I think when it comes to this sort of thing, the thing you've always got to remember is. You may agree or disagree with feedback. You know, sometimes it's really hard or you're on the fence. But at the end of the day, you're making the game for the players, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to have some people say singles plus and some people not. But you don't really want a game mode where, you know, people get like, oh, I would really love this dead man thing. But like it died out because it was singles plus in the first week, which was a big thing that sort of, you know, rang true. And we don't want to put in a lot of hard work for it to like die out. And there's oh, so okay. many other changes going on that like, Let's just relent on this one. Let's get a lot of positive feedback about the other changes. And maybe if we think that um, the next Dead Man Singles Plus is a good direction, maybe we'll retackle it then, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On our last podcast, we actually brought on some pretty big Dead Man mode names. And a Solo Mission was not for Single Plus. I was for it just because I, I pretty much said that I want to watch it burn, right? So if you're just <laughs> training in a monster cave, a Slayer hut, and you're just attacking something, and even if you're in combat, if it was single plus, you have no priority on the monster, you would just get attacked by anyone, maybe even a spec rusher. That's what I was planning to do. But they did now make it all single, including the multi areas. They turned to single plus. That will now be single as well. But it seems like single plus is still in the game after you attack someone. So if you're on someone and they try to escape, you still get the priority on them. So I think it's pretty much a win-win there are there any other changes is that is that the biggest change lately um yeah i mean we had a big feedback blog where we talked about um there were a few drop rates that people wanted adding like we didn't have uh, a lot of the zeta stuff like hydras and and um those sort of things added to the drop table multiplier basically because i copy pasted what was in trailblazer league and removed all the stuff that didn't make sense like elven signets things people won't care about mm-hmm. but completely forgot to add the things that we didn't actually include in uh, Trailblazer League, because obviously say I wasn't a part of that. So uh, things like that. Uh, that modifier is now four times. Uh, we made a couple of changes to like the finale as well, based on feedback. Just things like you're going to get an anti venom uh, when you start a new round, because otherwise, like it's basically you need a Sarp Helm or you die to venom in a one v one fight. Um, and I think we're giving, we're replacing three of the sharks with like an angler fish and two more carambans, just because we're sort of aware of, like. The way the sigils are, you might just want a bit more combo food than maybe last time. We'll just say oh. that. Okay. Oh, okay. Speaking <laughs> of sigils, Elena was talking earlier up before we were doing the podcast that she actually helped make sigils. Now, is there anything you could tell us about those sigils, the creative process, maybe even leak a couple? Because they, uh, <laughs> after Mod Husky just said that, I'm a little scared now. I don't know if I want to leak any, uh, so I have fair. to be a bit careful about what I say. But I can talk a bit about the process of actually like coming up with these, right? Yeah. Um, so basically, the first thing I did was kind of just sit down and look at what Husky designed, because he basically designed the whole thing, like the entire dead man. Ish. The, this time around, anyway. <laughs> uh, so sit down, kind of understand what he was on about with these sigils. Um, but I did love the concept, and I decided to kind of divide them. So you have like um, you have three three different like types of tiers of sigils. So you have tier one, tier two, tier three. These all depend on the um, the bracket that you're in. So I don't know if we mentioned it, but the um, the comma brackets that you mm-hmm. that you're in the worlds. Um, you will have access to like the, the tier one sigils on the lower brackets, and then gradually, you know, the tier two comes in, and then at the higher end, you'll get to get the tier three ones. Uh, so similarly to this, like they also scale in power level. So the tier three, tier one is kind of meh. Tier two is good. Tier three is amazing. Yeah. Damn. So I have a question with the sigils. So. Um... As far as I'm aware, you can get them as drops from monsters throughout Deadman mode. So, with the tier 3 sigil, 
um, would it be right in thinking that there will be people in the final who were just unfortunate and didn't manage to get one? Or is there going to be a system in place to ensure that everybody gets a tier free sigil? So you could be unlucky, I guess, and be in a position where you don't have one. Um, these are all untradeable, except for via the GE. So yeah. if you have enough money, you could just go buy any sigil you want, right? Assuming someone's selling it. Um, did we talk about, Husky, did we talk about the exact, you know, method of obtaining them? I don't, um, I, I don't want to, like, spoil the drop table. If <laughs> No, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Basically, any creature that you fight will have a chance of dropping uh, a sigil amongst, like, the, you know, the normal supply table that happened across, like, most NPCs? That got a bit of a rework for this one, and sigils mm -hmm. are now on that. Uh, I don't want to go into how the formulas are how often, but like in your first day, if you're going at it and obviously assuming you're actually killing monsters, right? Like if you're doing a bunch of questing, this isn't going to apply, but I would assume you maybe get like three or four, maybe five a day, but you could say that and like someone uh, is just going to get like 20 in one day and some guy's going to go three days and not see any because that's how RNG works in our game, oh, right? <laughs> So they're not super rare, but what will what will probably be happen is like in the first week or, or two, there's going to be a bunch of tier one and tier two sigils in the game, you know. So people probably will be selling these quite actively, uh, trying to trying to get their hands on maybe good ones or ones for builds they're working on. And I think as I mentioned in the summit, there's you know your qualifications based on total level. So you're you're going to be trying to pick up like oh I want this one because I want to get my wood cutting up and now I want to sell that and now I'm going to get my fishing up and I'm going to sell this and now I'm going to do some crafting because like it, that I know like people want to do a lot of PvP but it's it's mm -hmm. still going to be super fast to train those skills and you're going to be balancing you know your combat level progression versus your skilling uh but tier 3 sigils are really only coming in I think it's like the final two brackets or something like that I'd have to that double check so, yeah. Yeah. But it's very you know, rare though on the second to last and then on the last one it's still kind of kind of rare. Yeah, so you're probably still mm -hmm. going to be getting a lot of just mostly tier 2 sigils on the final world but like every now and then oh my god that's a tier 3 sigil have a look at it. Is it is it, and is it the one that you want, right? You know, or the one that is going to sell for a lot because I think that's the thing when you make a drop table there's 53 unique sigils. You're going to have some that are like eh okay, cool, whatever or like but you're going to have some that are just going to be like that's going to be sick and the plan for at least all the combat tier three sigils um, is they're all they're all pretty cool and they're all pretty unique. And I'm sure players will sim it and say this one is mathematically the best option or you know whatever. But that's part of the fun, right? You know. Oh yeah, you guys. There, there definitely will be metas. Uh, it's funny you mentioned combat sigils. We have three kind of categories for them. So there's combat, skilling, and last one is just utility. So just general use kind of things. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. Uh, I have another question on sigils. So, um, when you get a sigil, how how and where does the sigil go? Is it a physical item that goes into your gear slot, or is it something you consume? I'm guessing not, because you can resell it. Like, how does that work exactly? So they're physical objects. You just see them on the ground as anything else, really, and you pick it up. And to to get its power, you need to attune to it. And you can only do that in the bank. So you can't do it like, you can't change out your sigils mid-combat, uh, yeah. but go to a bank and you can change it, right? So you right. can have, um, so once you attune to it, you don't actually have to keep it with you. You can have it in your bank, but it doesn't matter. You don't lose it upon dying as long as it's attuned to you. Um, but some of them exactly. you're going to want to keep with you as well, because some okay. of them have an activation effect. I can spoil that much. So you actually have to okay. click the object and get its power. Oh, oh, like League. League of Legends. There you go, Rexy. Your favorite game. <laughs> so <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, on your third death, though, you do lose all three of the, well, all of the yeah. ones that you have, right? Yeah, okay. that's correct, yeah. And the person wow. who PKs them gets them. They don't disappear, or? They, they, they're just deleted. They disappear. Um, because otherwise they would be tradable, right? Like you could mm, technically trade it. That's what I was yeah. thinking. I was like, what if clans just suicide <laughs> their last person every time? But now this is this is getting somewhere here. I like that. Now, if someone is going to terrorize the first combat world mercilessly, you know, it's level 35. Are there any uh, hints at like combat tier ones that would be helpful for that? 
<laughs> so you mean uh, like specifically for the build of just owning the yeah, first bracket? Because we saw a first couple, right? It was like stamina and stuff. And I'm sure they're, yeah, they're, yeah. that's definitely useful. But like, would there be combat based tier tier ones that would be useful in combat, like low level combat? Oh, yeah. There's like the majority of sigils are tier one. That's where you will see like the most variety. Okay. Um, and there's the majority of those, again, are combat related. So you'll definitely see low tier combat ones, but they obviously like, they don't have the power level of the higher up ones. You see people in Fire Strike just beating cheeks with like the vet. Okay, all right, this sounds amazing. So um, one of the fun wait. things about that as well is you're thinking about tier one sigils because you're in the first bracket, but you get a tier two sigil right off the bat when you start the game. You get you get a choice of three, and it's always the same three when you restart, and everybody gets the same three. And they're all combat sigils, so you're start you're literally hitting the ground running with a tier two combat sigil, um, when you get going. So yeah, you're gonna have some some cool things to play oh around my with. God, that's gonna be so fun, Rexy. What, sorry, what were you saying, buddy? I I was just gonna ask. Um, in the low combat worlds between level three and I think it's thirty five or thirty six, are players in that combat bracket are they able to use the OP tier three ones, or do you have to be a certain combat level to use those? Yeah, you can buy them off the G and use them. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, you can use a tier 3 relic on a first world? Yeah. Oh! yeah that's that's going to be insane. They won't drop on that world, but they can come through the G E to you, right? What? So if you're at a level 35, you're only getting tier 1s drop for you, but like you'll probably buy some tier 2s, and, and if you're lucky, you're tier 3s, and that's going to be... I think that's the fun thing about the combat level worlds and how it's still going to feel like an MMO game economy sort of behind it because, you know, you might be thinking that, okay, what, what what's the highest I can get, like, my range level? And uh, I, I don't know if you can off the top of my head, but let's say, like, you could get a ballista, but you're never going to be able to kill, get the quests done and, and kill that, but you might be able to buy a heavy frame or, like, a buy a ballista from the Grand Exchange, right? And um, uh, that's some one of the cool things about it to me. Um, like, well, unless I mean, you do two sorry. runs and... You, you level up to the point where you can do the quest, and then you die oh, yeah. for the third time, so you have the quest done, but reset your levels and then level back up so you can use it. Oh my god, see, I was so about to say, to yeah, the yeah. whole world reset with questing is going to bring a whole different play style. That's my strat. I'm going to get to the highest world day one, try to quest out, and then reset and have some fun on the first combat bracket. Uh, now, <laughs> this is going to be my last question on Sigils. I know... I just have so many. It's such a new item in dead man mode. Um, I'm just going to shout out a couple and let, let me see. Just tell me if I'm hot or cold here. Or is there going to be possibly <laughs> a special attack relic just like in uh, last leagues, right? Where C engineer triple quadruple mauled me to death. Would that be hot or cold? We, we have to be really careful with this because it is a competitive game mode in terms yeah. of, if we can allow you to spec with a G mall five times in a row and just RNG one shot someone, while that sounds like a lot of fun in an open world, would be pretty terrible to have in like a finale situation with twenty thousand oh, yeah. dollars on the okay, line. Thank God. Thank God. So <laughs> the, 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 there are some powerful effects, and as Elena mentioned, like there's a lot of cool like on use things. And when you use this sigil, there'll be like an animation above your head. So there could be like a lot of like uh, meta game stuff where like oh my God, he's using that thing, and like you know you're you're. You know what I mean, right? You know what's coming. Yeah, once um, the animation is going to be in, ingrained in people's heads, and it's like fear is going to fill them, like when they see a dude in like Aram. Oh, or definitely. Something. Just, just and fear. I, th I think I think the best way I've I've described it. I've been in a few people's chats and talked a little bit about things. So like that stuff, I don't mind saying just on podcasts like this. But like, um, the thing to remember is that like when you had like these league relics, they were like these huge monumental things you only got five of, right? But these are fifty three things. That you could swap it in and out so individually they're all probably going to be weaker than a league relic but the the fact is that you you customize them right you, like because a re league relic would have like three or four bullet points sometimes but you might think a sigil only has like one right if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah so yeah diluted in power from those but i think the flexibility really will make up for that 100 percent. and some of them yes Sorry. <laughs> some Sorry, of them might was, be like useless in, in the scenario that you imagine because some of these are kind of balanced around two things, right? There's the open world aspect and then there's the finale aspect. So we don't want them to be really OP in the finale, you know, but still useful in the open world. Or, yeah, it's been really hard to like get that balance right. 
I mm-hmm. hope we did it right, but it, we'll have to see. <laughs> I think um, you know the change is a really nice thing. Like I, I don't, I, I really the podcast we did a while back with Husky. Husky said this pod, uh, this dead mum mode is going to be like none of the others we've had. Like I really do think this is going to be very different. So I think people are going to have to keep an open mind going into this. But if I had to take a guess at one of the combat sigils, oh. uh, something I would like to see, which may be there, and you don't have to say hot or cold, but Just if there's a facials. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. If there's a sigil which has a similar effect to say an Elijah Spirit Shield or a Divine Spirit Shield, where maybe you take reduced damage at the cost of like prayer points or something like that. Uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. And am I correct in thinking that you can use two combat sigils or is it just one? You can have two. You can have two and then you get another sigil which has to be a utility one. Or, or, or a skilling. skilling. Okay. Now, awesome. with those skilling or utility without giving too much away, could they have anything to do with combat? Like say you're out prowling, grabbing keys, like oh if you kill a dude you get like potions from him or i don't know you you mentioned the the stamina one right like yes utility ones could i imagine you would typically want that as your third one that um, does make yeah. sense because some of them are just generally useful you know that's gonna be really nice for quests I mean, in the stamina could you one, imagine sure. your your camp in like a fishing spot and like you have a relic that you could just catch fish barehanded and you get <laughs> cooked fish and you're just catching it while you're fighting someone Right, I'm thinking like <laughs> camping resource areas while you're fighting and just constantly having food. But that's just me. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. So, um, an observation that I've made and I've thought about quite a bit, um, and I've not really seen anybody else address this. So I was hoping that uh, either Elena or Husky, because you worked on this, you could give me some insight. So. The way that it currently works in this demo mode, it's going to be a case of if you kill somebody, you only get the items they have in their inventory and all the items they have equipped, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Unless it's the third time they've died, in which case, if it is their third time, you get their key and you get everything else that they had on them. So I have a a little bit of a concern with this because I, I feel like an issue here is that a lot of people, when they're getting attacked, they're more than likely just going to get to a bank and, you know, presumably it's not going to be their final and third life. They're just going to be able to bank all of their stuff and they're effectively not going to lose anything as long as it's not their third life. Um, So I was wondering if there's anything which is being put in place to counteract that from happening, because from a, a PKers perspective, if you put in loads of work trying to kill somebody with the no XP from attacking other players, you're using loads of supplies to get them down. It feels a little bit like you're getting cheated. If that person just manages to get to a bank and deposit everything and you get nothing from it. So if I can add to that as well, in previous demo modes, I can't remember how it worked exactly, but there were delays and things that were done with the banking interface where it wasn't so easily accessible. Is there anything which is going to be put in to stop people just banking all of their gear and losing nothing? Yeah, the big one is that you do get a bank key on the first two lives. It's just the bank key yeah. is only 10 items. So it's the same bank oh. key as you got previously, <laughs> right? Um, oh, okay. It's just that on the third life, that bank item goes, I'm going to yoink everything in their loot box and then fill it up to 28, right? Okay, in, yeah, in their... well, that can, yeah, that may, that's absolutely fine then. <laughs> Sorry, I, did, I didn't read that part. I was under the For impression shame. that you didn't get anything until the third one. Okay, that's my worries are gone. I have no you concerns. Imagine, <laughs> could you imagine killing people and getting nothing on DMM mode? Is that what you? Uh-huh. Oh my god! I, well, I was I was under the impression that you didn't get a bank key for the first uh, you, two maybe, deaths of somebody. That's why I thought it was. I thought it was just their loot. You might begin that mix up with just a complete wipe, and then maybe that they protect a couple items on them. So, say if you die with like a dark bow and your dark bow rushing, you could just protect that for the first two lives and just have fun. So maybe yeah. that's what you were thinking of. Yeah. I mean, either way, that that sounds great. That that's good. That puts all my worries at bay. That's perfect. It originally was pitched that like people would still keep their like three items plus one with primarily or zero plus one with skull, but we did remove that based on player feedback. That like a lot of people generally going around in the early game are, are going to be like dehyde rune legs and a scimitar, and they're not going to be risking anything. So like. To me, like that's the super fine balance with Dead Man is that like you've got like this element of like if it's far too harsh, you're only gonna get like an elite like two hundred people play it, and then like no one else, and they're never gonna be able to kill each other. And if you make it too 
uh too soft like too too casual it's not really dead man because it, it, dead man to me is all about that like risk and reward and that you know going back to that original idea that was sold as as a guy who's like chopping logs next to me and he cut down my tree and i'm, I'm gonna kill you and take your stuff yeah. right yeah. so it, it is super hard and that was like the big thing that was like with the whole singles plus is we were aware that like singles plus substantially changes the metas like you can't just do a slayer rush because you've got to be prepared to defend yourself at any moment in time and you know like maybe metas change entirely but that was the that was the line where like you know people were like is this just going to be catering to such a like specifically hardcore group of people because as much as the whole prey versus hunter is like that mostly framed negative side of pvp that is ultimately what is probably going to happen in dead man and you know, if, if there's no if there's no casuals like trying to play and have a good time for people to then mm-hmm. kill and people to kill those people, etc., right, then then it's not really gonna be a good game mode. You'll just see people like never fighting and yeah, it's just that really hard balance, right? You're gonna <laughs> yeah. want that whole ecosystem of like low level players, mid level players, not just the high level ones. Yeah, that's what, that's what got me. The most yeah. excited about Dead Man Mode is the combat bracketed worlds. And just to speak about like noobs and, and normies enjoying something, I always say in the wild, I would rather have a, a wilderness full of noobs running around, not even knowing their F keys, than a bunch of sweaty, sweaty PKers who like fall in and just, you know, all, all that other stuff because it would be so much more fun. Noobs, normies, they bring just a whole different definition to the wilderness and definitely Dead Man Mode. And I think these combat bracketed worlds will, uh, will also bring another definition that I'm looking forward to. Um, so we want to cover pretty much everything that was released during the summit. I I don't know, Rixi, Rice, do you have any other demo mode things before we uh, jump on a group Iron Man? Demo mode, I just spectate, so I don't I don't have anything. Else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would just like to say, uh, I think the changes you made recently, like the most recent blog update, I think they're very good. Um, and I can't imagine the process and how difficult it is to filter through feedback because I don't really use Twitter that much, but when I do go on there, I see it and it's just, you guys are bombarded with almost vicious comments on like how this is wrong. And I can't imagine myself looking at that and being like, Oh my God. Yeah, that guy's totally right. Like, but there it's, it's difficult because there is some genuine criticism in there, which is valuable, but it just, it's kind of sprinkled in amongst a bunch of like, anger so i can imagine that's very difficult to be able to filter through um but i do really think the single plus change is good uh and my mind get my mind got changed on it myself through reading some comments regarding uh how the casual players in demo mode effectively keep it alive which is so true uh as soon as casual players leave the game mode and everyone's max level of max gear they're gone it's it's no longer fun it's just max fights at banks and stuff and i think the single plus would have probably made that happen a lot quicker considering there would be no safety for them when it comes to like like you said doing the slayer grinds and actually having something to do which isn't constantly dying over and over again so yeah i think the changes you made were very good oh i'll just mention one thing though because i remember i did try demo for the first time last time and it's like you know the more traditional one right and like the whole uh multi phase to you know trim people down like i'm glad that's not there anymore you know because like (laughs) I'd be down to try demo in the future again if this format works out well. Just just want to have more time, you know. It's like because it does sound really fun, and I don't have to RNG my way into the finals, right? Like with the whole you know multi, you accidentally get stacked by like twenty people hitting you because they accidentally clicked on you or something, you know. It's it was just so random, you know how you whether you made it or not, honestly. Yeah. Did, well, I can't believe. Sorry, that's completely skipped my mind. We didn't even touch on that. Oh my god. I, I love you guys. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, I, I remember speaking to, I think it was Chris Archie at one of the previous demo mode events. And I, I suggested to him, I was like, why don't you just do single fights all the way to the finals? And uh, apparently it was, you weren't able to do it at the time. I, I can't remember. It was like a technical thing, but like, put it this way. I've played every single dead man mode. And uh, aside from the first one, I didn't play the first one, but I played everyone after that. I've never taken it seriously to the point where I've been like, okay, I want to win this. And like this time around, I have that genuine feel of like, I could actually get to the finals because I've never made it to the single fights. 
every single time it's multi, I end up getting chomped out of the map, or I, you know, I don't make it into the safe zone in time. And after grinding for a week of like 12, 16 hours a day, you just you leave the game mode after dying to the fog in such anger and it's just like why have i just wasted a week of my life just to die to a mechanic like that so i have to say i'm a huge fan of it uh i'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes because i imagine it's going to be very difficult to commentate and also you know obviously capture all of the good fights that are happening and uh like mint said in the last podcast it would also be a shame if you guys didn't capture the really funny newbie ones because I My think favorite. they'd be hilarious to watch. You know, that'd um, be a good warm up towards like the real fights when it's down to like a hundred people or something. You know, you know I yeah. agreed. I always have this memory in my head for maybe three demos modes back, and it wasn't even the 1v1s yet, but they were circling on these two people in the small Edgeville bank. One dude had like a DH hammer and full rune, other dude was in D hide, but he didn't have a range weapon. And they were just talking so much smack bank fight. And none of them were prayer flicking or anything. And that, for some reason, is my fondest memory of Dead Man Mode. And I think <laughs> if you guys just zoom in on those fights where no one knows what they're doing, everyone's going to be having a good time. Uh, yeah. Well, at least to start off, right? Because then, what is it? Oh. Like, um, 500? Like, it's like a... It's down to 1,000 people, right? The top 1,000? Something like that. Yeah, and then it filters to 500, 250... Yeah, yeah, like those two so, so, are, you know. It, it, it'll be fast. Like, I don't see yeah. it being longer than the multi phase. It might be shorter, to be honest. But um, at the very least, I think changing it up's a good thing. Um, again, I, I think the only people I've seen that have been upset about those changes have been people in so, clans. Uh, um, <laughs> like when it comes so, to the fight, when it comes to the final bracket, it's like I can understand why clans would be upset about that. But here's the thing: it's like if you're in a clan. You're still gonna benefit a ton from being in one in Deadman mode because you just have that, you know, you have that group, you have the supplies and so forth. It's like you can share gear around, nothing changes. Uh, it just means that you can basically pick on people in the multi area, which again requires skill. I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's nice to see change. And I think that um, it might encourage a lot of people to take this one a lot more seriously because I know there's a lot of people that have been single solo players that haven't wanted to join clans because it is such an effort to be able to get into one. And half the time when you do, it's not going to be the best one anyways. And it all like, <laughs> you know, turns into yeah. dust when it comes down to the final. So I like the changes a lot. I was going to say, Rakesy, there's not a lot of effort to join some of these clans. Maybe the top ones. No. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll well, be like, hey, are you training yeah. on a Cal Lumbridge? Show yeah. up in a week. You're, you're in, you know? <laughs> I mean, the last time I joined a, one of the good clans, they didn't even add me into the clan chat, so I ended up joining a bad one anyways. So it was, I got bad experiences. Hey, I, I, I do, I do want to say though, like the the hot, the clans that are veterans at it, they're they're really organized. Yeah. Like no joke. When I was in that call, they were just like, okay, everybody in my group, you know, we we go this at this time, and it was like it was super organized. Like no joke. Yeah. No, but, it, 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 but again, yeah. I will say, I will say, I will say, the whole clanning definitely got nerfed, which. I think it's really good for the longevity of the MMO just because most people are going to be like one or two people groups at most. They're not going to be in clans. But it's still a yeah. huge benefit to be in clans because you mentioned, you know, just to be yeah. able to, the, the ability to transfer items and all that stuff with each, within each other is amazing still. So it's Definitely. still a massive advantage. And now so. it's just it's just a simple case, case of it not being, um, it's not going to be, well, hopefully not titled clan man mode, hopefully with the final changes. Um, on that topic... I have a real question. So in terms of monitoring people who are cheating and abusing stuff that they're not supposed to and breaking the rules, um, muling's not allowed. And I'm assuming in that same category that if you're on, like, say, you're on your third death and you decide that you're going to die to one of your friends so he gets all of your loot, just to clarify, would that be against the rules or is that allowed? I don't actually know um oh, because it's kind of it's <laughs> so, so here's the weird thing um i try not to pay too much attention to like the the actual rules because i know that it's not like really my job to to enforce them i know that we added like more report options for uh was it boxing and there was something else so you'll actually be able to report people in game and that'll go to like player support to like review and stuff um because i remember it, it, it's kind of that weird 
gray area of like what is a mule and what what isn't so like you're saying you die to your friend and it's like oh well if you, if, you, if like your friend is like um you know it's say um rice cups playing you're like hey i'm just gonna suicide here have my stuff right i mean mm-hmm. you could have traded that stuff to him anyway but then like he's still playing and it's kind of like what is a mule because this is like a is someone who's actually going out and playing the game a mule like not really but like at the same time like someone who's just sitting in the grand exchange and flipping all day and has a bunch of items i mean that that's pretty clear that's that's like a mule account i think the combat level worlds will make that harder but not impossible because if you want a mule and you're at like the highest bracket you need to have your mule up at that bracket as well so at that point it did technically probably play the game mode you know yeah so it's also in that weird place but i also know that clans are gonna have like hey, I'm crossing into this. The, the clans will try and have a mule of each bracket, right? And they'll be like, hey, I'm about to cross the threshold, take stuff from one mule, cross the threshold, put it into another mule, right? They're going to do stuff like this. And I think it's just, um, obviously, we don't like muling. The whole point is to to have the risk and, um, you know, the anti-cheating team are going to be looking into it. Uh, and that's all I could like really say on it, right? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. No, it's it's a hard spot to be in. When Solo brought that up, I'm like, wow, I think everyone's going to end up doing that. Uh, but the other night on my stream, I was actually talking out loud about swapping because I'm actually trying to get people to play Dead Man Mode, at least the first week, first day. It's so fun. But swapping is allowed. And with the combat bracketed worlds, swapping is going to be a whole new monster. Because you're going to have people in the <laughs> last bracketed world, not in a clan, wanting the best gear. And you're going to have the lowest level worlds having people with the best accounts to, to make and farm money as fast as they can. And no one can kill them because they're in a low bracket world. Maybe you got those crazy uh, sigils for, for combat or something. Just gaining a bunch of GP. And then I was like, so there might be mules who reset themselves. Or not mules, sorry, swappers. Where they take their money, they swap it on over to another account. And they just cane combat to get to the last world. Right? It's the weirdest thing. And then swap it then. Right, I'm like, this is gonna be crazy. The swapping going on in this game, and like, you gotta get combat up and then reset again. And maybe certain combat worlds will have better swap rates. It's just, I was thinking about that, and it's gonna blow my mind. The economy in this game coming up. It's one of those interesting things where like swapping gold is like the gold you buy at the higher world is probably gonna be worth more than the swapping at the lower world because it's easier to get GP on like an account the lower world because that account's not risking anything but if you an account that has gone through the effort to level itself up to this point to sell and like you remember you can't go back down right so someone is going to be like i'm in the highest world i'm forced to engage with this swapper who has a higher rate because he's on my world right like you know because it's there's there's a lot of interesting sort of um player like player run sort of meta stuff that's going to be happening you know and i think that that's going to be cool to see um I know that like um, you went on like a, a whole lot of different points there, uh, Rakesy. About like I took a note because I was like, oh, do I want to talk about these things? Because I know you were saying you love it. If I, first of all, I just want to say like the fact that you guys are speaking so positively, Deadman. That's that's just what we wanted. I really like the name Deadman Reborn because it really is like taking this thing that people loved and died off and trying to make it great, but also Reborn tying into the three life system being quite cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it in terms of like the whole rule set this time round, like I think the problem. The previous iterations dev man had was they said here's the game mode have fun uh that was op we're gonna curb that in uh we're gonna give you this because this part sucks like getting supplies so we're gonna do and it just became this super sort of it started off all crazy and all over the place and it slowly fine-tuned into this like solid meta right of like never changing and i think that's what i never really want to happen with dead man like the whole like anything we've done this time that is good why don't we just scrap all that and try something else next time or like next time what if there is never a global drop table or what if next time it's singles plus or what if next like it doesn't need to be hey this is the new dead man going forward because i think that would defeat the purpose because you just end up doing the same again right i think yeah. that like the way i see dead man is it should just be a pvp league in, in my honest truth like it should be the the, the yearly thing that pkers get to enjoy because that was like a big thing in League's design was like, is PvP off the table? Is it not? We don't know. And that was after Twisted League. We're like, we don't know. Like, should, should we do something like that? Yeah. Well, I hope PKers get to enjoy more than one thing a year. Just just got to add that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that a leak there? Is, is it Dead by Mood going to be a yearly thing? Or is it going to be every three months, six months? How's, how's it going to go going forward? Did you not know? It, it's hard to know exactly what 
will happen going forward because this is something we're starting that's new but the plan was always to say let's have like a yearly league like or a yearly dead man right and sort of go off that but obviously that like you could end up in a position where you're at the end of the year and there's just no time to do it and you never we never got around to doing it so like it, it, it i can't really say and ask people to hold mod husky said to like jagex three years from now we never got a, a dead man in right yeah. Uh, or, a league yeah, or whatever. It will have to be after you guys see the results uh, in the fir- mm-hmm. in this new one, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's gonna do. Last thing I'll say, I think it's gonna do and perform really well because the anticipation and build up for this has been huge. Because people have just been like, "Hey, like, where is it? Where is it gone? Everyone's been waiting for it." And uh, I really like the fact as well. I, I feel like I see a lot of variety in this one, like. To figure out what the meta is gonna be on a free combat system world, and with all of like the extra features that have been added, like I, I, I feel like this one probably could be played out for quite a long time before you know it actually gets figured out. Um, and yeah, it just it feels like a fresh start. That that's how it feels like to me. It feels like something brand new with a similar mechanic design, and uh, I'm very excited for it. I will say I'm very excited. Yeah. I- Agreed. It's like it's a reborn. Yeah, <laughs> you could have Refresh. named it Dead Man Mode Phoenix or something like that. <laughs> yeah, Rixi, what were you saying about reborn last podcast? <laughs> I, I did have a cool idea for it though, as well, which it isn't a perfect idea and it has problems. But like, what if whatever we did for the, that year of Dead Man suddenly we reset the permanent world and that's the new rule set for that next year? Uh, now that problems because like there are people who have got attached to that world and spent a ton of time in that world and now don't want to lose their progress but that is a world where like people are like hey can we get updates and and it's never always been in sync with the latest dead man you know it's been like the changes don't always come through and i think that could be a cool idea uh m- maybe if we did do it we do it on a completely like separate world so it's like there's now two permanent dead mans but then that could be weird but that's something that i threw around internally and I-, I don't know if anything will come of it but i think it is a an interesting idea right that you hey, you got to compete for this for three months and now have fun with it for like, or for yeah. a month, sorry, and have fun with it for another 11, right? Or thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. I, think it'd be great. I mean, I think it will be. And I think that uh, one of the biggest issues I had with the previous Deadman mode was almost every single one, was, they, were, they were almost like identical copies. And sometimes there were a few things that changed. Um, so regardless of if this one's going to be good or not, like, we don't know. We'll just have to see. Like, players are soon going to figure out whether they enjoy the content or not. Um, and taking risks and actually doing something different is huge. Like, that's just, that's all I can ask for. I just didn't want the same thing as what we had previously. Like, put it this way from me if this Dead Man mode was just the exact same as the last one, which was like a year ago, I probably wouldn't have played it because I'd have just been like, there's a lack of like effort going into this. But the fact that, it's been completely changed and now it seems like it's it's almost unidentifiable compared to the last ones it's exciting it's like i can't wait to see what this is all about you know so i i really do appreciate the effort and time that's gone into this and um i just wish that there were more teasing and leaks about it because like it felt like we were in the dark for such a long time and people were people were gagging to just just have a little something you know, just just to hear a little something that was that was on its way, but hey, it's here now, and I'm happy. I'm trying on my Twitter. I, I <laughs> absolutely trying. I, I, my, my hands are tied until the summit and the blog went out. But now I, I put a tweet the other day saying 53 sigils and trying to just get people hyped. And I I think I got told like like someone said like oh you overhype things too much and like what was it was it I overhyped Theater Blood hard mode. I think people thought it was going to be the next like Inferno, right? Um, but like, I'd rather overhype something than underhype something. And with regards to changes to Dead Man, I'd rather try the craziest thing that I could that I thought would be good and fail spectacularly than be scared to try it all. You know. Yeah. yeah th- to to be fair, to be fair, people on Twitter are usually the most sweaty, like the top one percent of the sweaties. So everything they say is always going to be like it's not as impressive to me, right? But like, if it's not impressive to them. Then it means that the for the majority of players they'd be like, oh, this is gonna be so hard. I can't even you know. When's the, when's the last time <laughs> when's the last time you ever took advice from a dude on Twitter, right? If you're taking advice from people on Twitter that have an anime AVI, I mean like I've never I mean people choices. say the same about Reddit. 
And yeah. Well, no, like, like, I, I, yeah. <laughs> it I've, doesn't I've matter used, where oh, our players are. Yeah. That are yeah, I've, I, like personally, I've used you know all the social media platforms, and Twitter has definitely the most concentrated amount of sweaty players in the entire community. Like, there's no, <laughs> um, there's no sweatier groups of people for RuneScape that use social media other outside, like outside of Twitter. Bro, like, you want to know why? It's because they have Twitter. group DMs, right? I think Reddit yeah. may have something like that, but in Twitter, it's so much easier to just compile all these sweaty people in one chat and then yeah, they literally have their own little the, memes. And then the sweatiest they, oh, people are on Twitter, straight up, 100%. It's so bad, dude. 100%. Um, <laughs> so... I could talk about Dead Man Mode all day, but we have so much to cover on the summit. I think the next thing we want to talk about is Group Iron Man. A lot of the J mods here have definitely worked on the Group Iron Man behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know much about Group Iron Man though. Rice Rakesy, could you explain it a little bit? Like what's going on, release dates, etc. Or I'll let well, maybe the J mod should. Maybe the J mod should. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as I'm aware, the Group Iron Man should be coming out within this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's the mm -hmm. plan. Yeah, would you guys rather just explain kind of like the yeah, general you know, probably better. idea? Yeah, because <laughs> I think I'd rather cover race three stuff personally. I'm not as familiar with the current group Iron Man plans, but yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty much what it says on the tin, right? You're Iron Man, but together, um, it's a new game mode that comes out this year. Uh, I don't think we've said the release date or anything like that because we. I'm waiting on that. It's been fluctuating a bit internally as well. Was it supposed to come out 2019 winter? Yeah, 2017. <laughs> yeah, what, what the announcement. Yeah. But yeah, uh, new game mode. Uh, you can play in groups of from two to five. Um, and you, you make your group uh, right after Tutorial Island. You go to this new area. We're calling it the Node. And you group up there with your friends. And then you head out into the world and do Iron Man stuff. Basically, combat um, works like as if you were mains internally. And that's the rule of them, right? Like internally within the group, you interact as main accounts. Okay. But, but you can, can you drop group, an item and then someone can loot it in the same group? Okay. Yeah. Cool. But outside of the group, you have iron restrictions, right? Towards anyone. And that's really it. Like that's the essence of the game mode. Um, yeah, well, there's a few extra things like you get, you know, group Iron Man armor just to kind of signify you get a new icon in chat and all that. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, do you know what? I have been thinking about group Iron Man and starting one for so long, and I've never like, I I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. I didn't find a group or anything like that. Until recently, I was uh, I was hanging out with a few of my RuneScape friends, and they really wanted me to join their team. And I was just like, I don't know if I want to commit to this. Like, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. Well, because I don't play Iron Man, I may I just play mains. Like that's what I do. And um, the group Iron Man of like when I think of it, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh my god, you don't have to solo Corporal Beast. I, I can't think of anything worse. Oh my god, trying to get a sigil from Corporal on Iron Man. Anyone that's done that. I, I take my hat off to you. And the fact that this now allows you to like group up with your friends, it's fantastic. But um, all of my friends were trying to get me on board and they were very crafty by it because they started to describe their plan while I was in the call. And they were just like, oh, we could really do with somebody that's going to go to last one standing and getting us that early gold. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, I'm in. I was like, I'll, I'll come in with you boys because it sounds good. But um, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be really fun. If I may uh, mention one thing. So my friends did speak about this. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, as somebody on a group Iron Man group, you're able to do uh, Cox raids and raids in general with just whoever you want to outside of your group. Um, would you be able to give me a bit of insight into the full process there instead of just allowing it to be you know, just your group being able to do that content instead of it being with anybody? Sure. So I, I, I guess it all started with like thinking about group Iron Man as an easier way of playing Iron Man, right? Like we want to cater to the people who say, oh, I want to play Iron Man, but I don't want to do those long TD grind, tedious grinds alone, right? Like you don't yeah. want to do corp alone. Um, yeah. Which, I, I, By the way, I think you should really like 
selling yourself into that group like say that yeah i'll join but you guys have to do my green crafting you know yeah yeah uh, you i don't can know make some there. silk squad <laughs> but, yeah anyway like that that is part of the target group right like we want to get those people into the iron mode those people who haven't really played iron before and really wants to give it a try but maybe not alone um yeah. and for those people those tend to be more casual players and if you are in a group would say two, three other people who don't really play that much and suddenly one's on holiday and you really want to raid, but you can't because one is working and one's on holiday. So do you just not play? The game. Like, what do you do, you know? So we don't want to limit people like that, um, which is why we decided to go with allowing you to group with anyone for raids. Okay. Mm. That, yeah, right. that's, I have some, that's I have some technical, some more technical questions, yeah? So... Have you guys confirmed how the banking works when it comes to, you know, sharing amongst your teammates? Sure. Um, so trading within the group is obviously allowed, right? Yeah. Shared storage is something we're trying really, really, really hard to do because it would be epic. Um, but it has a lot of tech constraints. So the holdup is really, you know, what can we do from a, an engine perspective? Do we have enough time and like enough people really to get this through it's a lot of exploratory work as well like what what can we do with the system we have already and what do we need it takes a lot of time to figure that out yeah so for me personally i feel like a shared storage like a, a shared bank you go to the bank you have your private bank but you also have an option to go to your shared bank right like as a separate option i think mm -hmm. that would be amazing yeah. Um, but the, the reality of it is that that's really hard to do. And if the question is, you know, do we launch Group Iron Man, let's say in a month, right? Not that it's in a month, but if you have that choice between Group Iron Man in a month without shared storage or Group Iron Man in three months with shared storage, I yeah. would take the Group Iron Man now, you know, the sooner the better. And then we can add that shared storage later. That, that's yeah. how I see it anyway. So is that, that sounds, what's going to happen fair. then? Or is that just how you see it? <laughs> <laughs> Work is ongoing to investigate okay. if we can do it. I, I, I can't mean, promise that we will have it for launch, but it, it, we're definitely looking at it. You know? You're know, you basically looking at taking, um, what's his name? Party Pete and Falador's drop party room and making it so, you know, balloons <laughs> don't drop down and you can take stuff back out. But I can imagine <laughs> Uh, you know that must be quite a hard process could you imagine like if that. that's how you had to spread your gear out y'all go to the Falador party room <laughs> yeah. you gotta pop the balloons like all right what'd you get It'd be amazing no but yeah no i i can understand that and i'm guessing that that's a lot of like i don't know these technical terms but back ends engine work and stuff like that yeah. which takes obviously a lot of time and resources so yeah that that seems fair and i totally agree i'd rather have it in a month and then have an update in a few months time being like hey we figured out this you can have exactly. that now. And you'll yeah. still be able to trade people right it's not as convenient because one of the big perks about the uh, the shared bank you know would be that you can just when you log off you can you can leave your ags in there and then when i come on later on i can just pick that up I don't need to meet you in game to get the stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. if me and Rakesy did a group Iron Man and he was grinding silk all night, and I needed to go buy something <laughs> the next day, you could just leave it in the bank and I can grab some real quick. It'd be great. <laughs> uh, exactly. Dude, God, you know, I, I'm actually turning into a bit of a merchant god because I bought a hundred thousand silk because. Me and Mint's got this. We got an ongoing joke. This one time I traded him a PK split of just like, it, it was literal, like, it was poop, wasn't it? Like, what was it? It was like some sort of tar or something you could do it nothing was, with and it wouldn't sell. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't sell. So, it was 3 million tar. Thank you, bro. I bought 100k silk just to trade, just to split a PK with Mint, just to have the memes and stuff. And uh, I put them on my main account and I just whacked them in the grand exchange for 100 GP each. And uh, so far, I've like, God, I don't even know, a thousand percent on my investment. Per I've made like 100k so far. <laughs> They're yeah. actually selling for 100 oh, yeah. GP each and you can buy them for 10. So people are impatient. Oh, yeah. You've got your talents. <laughs> You want, the original Silk story came from when me and Rakesy made a wager on, uh, I don't think it was Leagues, right? It was the second Leagues, Blazing Trails. Whoever had yeah. the highest rank would win. 
this man spent four weeks at the silk stalls. So. That's not completely <laughs> true. But you saw, you saw. Here's the thing: I'd never played the first Trailblazers, and uh, so I didn't know how to play. And I don't play Iron Man, so I literally treated it like it was Dead Man mode. Like I just played Dead Man mode on Trailblazers minus the PKing. That's how it felt for me. Um, so I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I just thieved at the silk store because it was <laughs> sure AFK for a few hours. <laughs> so I, I, I have a group Iron Man question, actually. I'm not, I don't think I'll be playing it. I'll probably be looking forward to more leagues, dev and mode, et cetera. I might jump on it later. Um, but would there ever be like a hardcore group Iron Man where say one person dies and everyone just, their whole account's just deleted, you know, and maybe they're charged a hundred dollars for their PayPal. Just something real... <laughs> real bad is that <laughs> is that in the works um so it's definitely something we've discussed right like everyone loves hardcore and the the big part holding us back on it really is the uh, the high scores work needed for it because to to just make hardcore in itself while we're also making you know regular group iron man wouldn't be too much work but then it's the whole question of, okay, should they have their separate high scores? Should they have unique high scores for two, three, four, five man groups? You know, that's a lot of added work to, to just get that out. Uh, so one thing we've discussed is potentially launching with like, um, like an unofficial mode, right? I think it was Mod Ash who suggested just having like a, like a bush maybe on the node that is alive if your group has not died and then if if your group dies, it could just kind of signify that death, you know. But I'm I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys think. If if we do group hardcore, how should your group die? Is it one life just shared amongst everyone, or do you have lives equal to the amount of people in the group? And when you lose a life, do you get kicked from the group, or do you just de iron? What what happens? Um. I, you know, I heard an idea the other day. I was um, lurking in Foe's uh, chat, and he, or it might have actually been the Sebe podcast I was watching. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was that podcast. And he was saying they were planning on doing an unofficial one where effectively, if somebody dies, they then would have to restart their account um, to be able to come back into the group. So. I guess you could completely change it up maybe if you wanted to take it to a real extremes and be like, if you die on a hardcore and a group Iron Man account, it's like your stats will just be completely wiped and you have to start again from like a level three. Um, oh. And I really like the sound of that idea. I thought that like that sounded really cool what he described. So I, I'd be all in for that. That sounds good. See, I like that idea. I didn't even think about it. I had, I had two other ideas. I like, add your idea on there as well but one would be like the normal idea where you die you know you just turn into a normal hardcore right or a normal group iron man account my idea would be like if one person dies in the group everyone gets teleported to like some stadium where you could just throw tomatoes at them and then you, you just all die <laughs> right maybe they gotta do like four infernos but where it's just a long royale of battles spawning monsters and they just have to die they can't log out and then you could just see their items despawn and maybe you had like a burn box how much gp has been burned from group iron man so just something real dramatic that's what that's what i would enjoy yeah i mean it could be something less harsh where mm. effectively if somebody from the group did die like they wouldn't lose their stats they wouldn't lose their uh gear and so forth but if they wanted to continue playing with that group, they would have to start again from a level three. So instead of just completely wiping all of their progress, like they get to keep it, but unfortunately they'd have to start again. Um, outside of that, it just depends how harsh you want to make it really. Um, harsh. You know, you could, you could have like a full group thing where it's like, if one person were to, were to die, the entire group is then just almost disbanded or it's no longer a hardcore group. Um, which I think would be really cool, but I, I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like outside of your control issues with that, such as like, you know, if somebody's internet goes out or something like that, punishing the entire group for one person seems a little bit too harsh. Uh, I'm not really too sure. Min, do you, uh, Reed, do you have any ideas for this? Um, well, like the whole hardcore thing. Yeah. Uh, and a group it's just, man. It's just, 
I think I think it's fine in concept, right? But it's just like, yeah, how do you keep track of the high scores? And I guess all that stuff, like you know, Malena said, was probably a bit too confusing. I think I think in terms of how you should paste the updates, obviously, I think normal group Ironman should happen first, and then flesh that out, like figure out the whole you know bank uh, sharing thing, because I think that's probably going to be the one of the cornerstones of that update is how to set that up right can you like set timers on what items you can put in there and all that stuff figure that stuff out first and then if it works out then you know jagex can milk another hype event like you know hardcore version or ultimate iron version or something in the future right i feel like yeah. we should have you on as like a producer just scheduling all our work here yeah yeah because right. like rice's yeah. dream <laughs> right re speaks with so much authority if we do as he says yeah i don't know about that <laughs> um, but no, yeah I, mean, I think hardcore is fine as a concept though yeah in terms I, of like the uh the high score something i guess you could do is like let, let's say for example the top hardcore team for group iron man it's like so they're number one in position that's based off of total levels as usually done and then one of the people dies maybe when that happens it would be a case of with hardcores it just gets a cross through their name so the group would get a cross through it and then it would either stay there if they decided to stop and there would be no more progression or alternatively they could have that member who dies rejoin on another hardcore for that group and then maybe they just get knocked down to like several thousand and they have to work their way back to it perhaps um or something along those lines perhaps or or maybe just let them continue getting levels and basically eventually there is going to be a group iron man team of like five dudes that all end up getting max capes and they're just number one solidly forever like that would also be really cool to see I, I, Rakesy, I just gotta say, I really liked your idea where if one died, they'd be reset. So maybe it would just be two modes for hardcore. You'd have the one and done. If anyone died, whole group reset, right? But maybe yeah, but you get shiny red armor, right? Maybe just something that glows. Runescapers go crazy for shiny stuff. And then you could you have know, the one where if you die, you get reset and you gotta build back up. And I think both of those could be high score. Uh, there'd be a lot of high scores though, but the, both of those would be really fun. Yeah. But, and I, hilarious. I think... Could you imagine your friend getting reset? <laughs> yeah that'd be so good the, uh, the thing is like I, I i feel like it'd be probably quite problematic to punish the entire group for one person's unfortunate well, you would get red demise. shiny armor right there'd be two choices so it's either you go for the shiny armor that gives no bonuses one and done or you get the reset yeah i, I mean, feel there's... like those those could be like group modes that are either seasonal or like just released at separate years you know it would be like, very, very competitive. People love hardcore Iron Man. Like they absolutely love it. And like to see a team just do so well. And there's also the fact that, you know, you'll be able to share gear. So even if somebody has to start again on a level three, it's like, well, they can do so. And it's a case of they have all the resources to get back to where they had to be. And obviously it takes time, but it would be significantly faster. So what about you, Elena? What do you have? Do you have any ideas for Group Iron Man Hardcore? So for me personally, kind of based on what I was saying earlier about Group Iron Man being kind of <laughs> catering a little bit to the more casual player, I would like to see Hardcore being the opposite, you know, being even more Hardcore than current Hardcore. So I'm in favor yeah. of the more like strict, like you have one life and and that's it across the whole group then yeah you do have the issue of like okay but what if that one person dc's and then you ruin the fun for everyone else it does suck i remember yeah. um i remember when we first discussed all of this internally we talked about hardcore and then harder core so you could have like <laughs> a you know oh. the base hardcore but then you could have like the extreme version where one death just wipes the entire group and uh, safe death could just not be a thing anymore. So if you die in the inferno, you're dead. If you die in chambers, you're dead. You know. I would I would yeah. love to see the extremeness of the hardcore and runescape just in total, right? You go in the wild, you could lose everything. You go to Zora, you can lose everything. You get your hardcore, regular hardcore, you get wiped off the high scores, you die once. That kind of extreme on every side of Runescape makes this game very attractive to me. So as hard as you can make it, even if there's two modes, I think that would be great. Um, 
Bryce, did you have something to say? Or was that right? Yeah, like, um, obviously, I think normal Gurbarman is going to be, like, the main thing that'll stay perpetual. I don't know if, like, a hardcore version or hardcore version is something that, that is necessarily, uh, like, makes sense for it to be a permanent thing, because most people probably just, as soon as their friend dies, they're, like, done, you know? It's okay. It, you yeah. Know? So. I mean, they they could bring it out as like you know the same as they do Dead Man Mode and Trailblazers, yeah, where they're like, yeah, hey, it feels like a seasonal thing to me, you know? Yeah, they they could make it into like a mini event kind of thing where it's like, hey, you guys have a month, you're gonna have increased XP rates. Uh, let's see who you know who can get to the highest level, and they could do something fun with it like that. And I, I'm sure if you were to do that as well, you definitely like find a lot of issues with it, and you'd be able to iron that out if you wanted to then make a permanent version of that for the main game. Yeah, as a new event, that. actually, you could find like a harder core event, almost. Yeah, yeah just yeah. like a yeah. test, a little test of sorts. Yeah. And just, <laughs> give it, yeah. just give it increased XP rates and people won't worry about, you know, losing a bit of time for fun because, hey, why do we play video games? It's to have fun. Hey, so. You can give them yeah. negative XP work. rates. If you start them at the Toriel Island, they're just going to go crazy. They love it. Oh, man. They <laughs> start out as nuts, right? And then you go down and back to oh. Tutorial Island. You go into the little rat dungeon. They're just going, you know, they love it, man. <laughs> Uh, a fun question here, because I don't know if uh, you J-Mods are going to be doing group Iron Man, but if you were in your own little group, what would be your strength you bring to the uh, Iron Man dynamic? Uh, Arcane, if we could start with you, man. What, what is a strength? I'm not even sure what that means. Like, All right, well, is, let's just is, say is, if me... What are you good at? Okay. Arcane would Bryce... carry our asses through raids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think... Yeah. yeah Arcane's um, a... You're a really good PVMer, right? In the... You know, in the team, I believe. Right? Yeah, I've done quite a lot, yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'd want to do it with friends. I know. I'd probably end up doing a bunch of the boring shit because I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't bore me. Like, just like get get all the glass and stuff and seaweed runs. Like, I kind of <laughs> enjoy it. So, I when imagine you do... they deflect that to me. But when you do Wolf boring flex. stuff, does your brain just gloss over, or are you just having a really good time? I don't. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you get like 56 like, ah. from one run, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you like numbers go up. <laughs> yeah. He's a number guy. I, 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 I need. Uh, I need it on my team. That's why I stopped playing my hardcore. I got to the seaweed grind and I was like, this is, I figured out the hours it was going to take to do it at first. I didn't want to know because I was enjoying seaweed. it. Like, but like, I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. Rake <laughs> like, C, Rake C, Rake C. You haven't done charter ships if you think CB runs are bad. <laughs> I love the early game Iron Man so much. I wasn't working. <laughs> this is like before I joined Jagex, and I had like two months between jobs, and I just started an Iron Man, and I just played like 16, 17 hours a day, just early game Iron Man. Every day is a new grind, and it's oh, so sad. <laughs> no, 60 some, seaweed, man. Uh, some people can do stuff for a lot longer than others, man. So, yeah, yeah that's a strength I mean, right there. This, this is the thing, you know, though, that like, my, my hardcore, I didn't start playing it until I got 99 fishing and fire making. So like the account is sick. Like you'll look at it and be like, damn, that's a nice account. But like I got to the seaweed and I was just like, I I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, I'm Racing. not, I don't want to, I don't want to collect seaweed for a hundred hours. I was like, I'm out. I'm is that done. account still alive? It's still alive. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I need to start playing on it at some point. I, I will progress it. I will push through the seaweed grind, but I just need to be in like the a skilling mindset. Grind. Like it's a grind, you know? The yeah. It is, grind. man. It's a Rice. grind that I have. Rice is having those Vietnam flashbacks. It's just these like 100 hour grinds that he just Dude, can't even No, no. Nah, right I'm now. just thinking of charter ships, you know? That that was hell. That was hell back then. Um, but yeah, back, the to the, yeah <laughs> back to the fun question, though. Yo, Husky, what would be your strength in the group, Iron Man? I, I don't know. I think I'd be that, that like guy who's like coordinating everything if you know what i mean like like oh when are you guys gonna be on are you gonna be on to raid come on like we need to get this ready by the I, I think i'd probably be that because like i almost take that like role in other games but like hmm. i don't know i kind of i, I kind of relate to arcane i think that like once you've played iron man there's just something satisfying about seeing a bank tab of supplies just waiting to be used and you know it's going to take like 300 hours to go through everything but you're just stockpiling and you're like Oh, I've got 1,000 rune ore, 2,000 rune ore, 3,000 rune ore. Oh, this is going to be so good. And Order. I don't think you get that until you play an Iron Man. How much yeah, rune ore cool. do you need, bro? 300, 4,000 rune ore? My God, that's insane. Not enough. 
None yeah. now. We nerfed the blowpipe, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about amethyst. Yeah, amethyst. Um, so, Elena, what, what would be your strength? Oh, man. All the good ones are taken. Like, come on. Okay. I think... Um, I think I'm very versatile. Like I can do anything in game. That sounds cocky. I just mean like I, I'm I'm pretty much like, okay, you don't want to do that, right? I'll go do it. I don't mind, you know. You're the, yeah, the so, substitute. Okay. You're there. Yeah, exactly. Like so <laughs> so you have Husky just telling Arcane what to do. You go do the boring grind and then I'll just like do whatever he doesn't do. <laughs> sounds like so you guys all everyone? enjoy boring grinds. I mean <laughs> you're all just I mean, you we're, 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 we're RuneScape players. Yeah, yeah, just to be clear, all three of you guys are, like, experienced players of RuneScape. All three of you guys. Uh, we're all maxed, and two of us have... Iron. Oh, what? Oh, you guys are maxed? Damn. Oh, my God. All right, Rick, see you, man. You gotta go. <laughs> hey. hey. Uh, if, okay, if okay, RuneScape, yeah. You... If RuneScape reset, I would race to max. I just don't feel like doing it now, though. Yeah. But if it reset, mm -hmm. I would. I would race. I, I was so never mowed well. to Mac, right, to Mac at all. But then once you like bank it all and Iron Man just passively doing PVM, it's kinda like, I might as well do it. Like it's just there. You might as well use those supplies and it just kinda happens. Yeah, yeah so uh, it's very impressive though, because you guys are all very competent players of RuneScape. So now you guys get to design the content. So I think that's a huge like selling point, you know, to you guys specifically. Because a lot I think a lot of people work in the, you know, in the games industry, but they don't play the game. And then I think they lack something, you know, like an insight of sorts to make. They lack a thousand updates. hours of glass making, dude. Yeah. That's what they lack. Like, how much of that bias affects your uh, ability to, you know, make updates, right? Like, do you feel like you guys are making things objectively for the sake of the game, or, or is it still like, you know, you have to think about it from your own point of view mostly, or do you try not to, you know? It's pretty hard to like avoid the bias sometimes, like. You do just have like the high level perspective, max account, Iron Man, whatever. Uh, but you do have to, it's part of the job, right? To constantly question your own biases and not get really too bogged down on it. That is very hard because you kind of, as a dev, you need to see it from all perspectives. You need to look at it from, you know, a newbie perspective, a mid level, a high level, different types of high levels, you know, PvP, PvM, skilling, all that sort of stuff. So if you're really into like just one type of thing, then. You really have to catch yourself and make sure that you consider other other sides of it as well. I think the thing that's like really interesting though, like you kind of said like, oh, there are some game devs who just don't play their game. And it, I think it's it's obviously an advantage. Um, like we um, we actually did like a, a thing internally where you're like, oh, like you're all in different development teams. What do you think our development team strength is? And when it was me, Elena and uh, Arcane in it, we, we all, said well one of our well, we have fantastic game knowledge that's that's a great strength but one of our downsides is that we don't have the other perspective right i get some of my best feedback uh i got some of my best feedback on leaks working with mod flippy and you know he's an iron man who's working on like his whip grind right now so he's not you know really low level but like he looks at the game for a completely different perspective than i have and there's things that are relatable i think i get that a lot when i see like people in the you say you talk about like the twitter community when they're you see like they'll be ne so negatively flaming something but the truth is they can't see the bottom from the top right they only have this perspective up here and that's something like we need to catch ourselves on a lot and it's why you work as a team right i would never want to work in a team with like only maxed iron men because like there would be like one dominant perspective right um and like i've had like i've had like good feedback from an artist who barely plays the game or from cm right they're just like completely just like wow that 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 you're absolutely right do you know and i think that can't be taken for granted but i i think that, that i think that means i would separate it right there's there's being knowing your game is so important and, and having played it but you don't need to have played it at a good level to give feedback right it's just that you know there will obviously be some strengths where when it comes to play testing for Raids 3, you can absolutely bet that me, Arcane, and Elena are going to be jumping on there and probably giving some like really good high-level feedback on these invocations that other people can't give. And they'll give us the feedback on the things that, you know, we're not seeing, right? Yeah. That was really? like super useful for uh, top hard mode, I believe, as well. We all three, like, and... Uh... And mod curse and mod Bruno as well. We were all like jumping into groups to just play test hard mm -hmm. mode and and play it without any cheats at all. You know, just playing playing it. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that's I think it's really awesome though that you guys are experienced players that and and then you guys are working on the high level stuff because it, you can tell that when you guys are you know putting out your blogs for uh, especially the high level stuff right there's a lot of like reflection on like previous things that you guys did or in the past like oh yeah we're not trying to have this problem again is it safe to say we're kind of done with the group Ironman and we can kind of move forward to uh, the well, race the PBM stuff or you guys want to keep going on with the group Ironman stuff? Um, yeah. Are there any questions? Uh, Rakes, you got any more questions about group Ironman, buddy? Um, not really. No, I'm looking forward to it, surprisingly. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to jump in and not have to solo corp for a million hours. Part I think that, people really much. exaggerate how bad that grind is. Oh, it is the most oh, boring grind in the game. You you, you got oh, three sigils in like two fifty kills. You can't speak about that grind. <laughs> I can't. Oh, device, you, device. you turn your brain off. You don't think at all. It's Not yeah, everyone can just turn their brain off, off, bro. I wish I could, vid. <laughs> Yo, I got sleeping <laughs> problems, bro. I can't even how, sleep how, on track. Bro. How many how many kills an hour is it solo? Absolute max kills per hour. Think, like, if you're it's like, eight, 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 it's like four to six if you're like yeah. fully brain dead but you can go oh a lot higher if you put yeah you can get like seven or eight of your like ultra sweat how i just gotta ask like, how often do you turn off your brain bro it feels like you can just whenever i load up just... moonlight just... <laughs> 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 i click on blue highlight you know the, the... Yeah, it's so brain dead. it is honestly uh... the best thing right there um yeah okay. we could speak on rage three i don't i don't know much so i'll be the listener here yeah yeah um so i think before we even get into race three i think we we've recently in the game right like there's been a lot of updates after such a long time of kind of like silence right like a lot of high level players were like oh my god oh what, what's going on with the game there's nothing going on and then you guys all of a sudden came out and over was like nope just kidding we have so many things coming out so then you guys released the harmful nightmare harmful theater of blood and then combat diaries and then soon you're gonna have um you know race three and stuff right so before I even ask you guys about rates three, like with with the whole drought in the updates, right? So what what was the mindset with hard mode, right? I know you guys said in the blog it was more about just putting out something that people can do in the meantime that doesn't like you know like change the game massively because I know hard mode top and theater a lot of the rewards are just cosmetic stuff, right? So so kind of like what what is the you know thought process, right? Like when you are thinking about what high level updates to bring out to appease the players and then and then also the balancing side of it like how do you guys you know balance out the whole introducing new items and also bring something relevant to the game during and this time of kind of like nothing to bring it back like a year or so so like at the start of this year we kind of knew the the schedule in terms of what we wanted to offer and we knew that we still wanted to do raise three, but we also knew we couldn't do it soon. We still had all these like backwards commitments from a while ago, such as group Iron Man. We wanted to do Dead Man. We still needed to do leagues, and we need to do all these in the year. And it's like we just didn't have the resource at all. Like we cannot do a raid right now. We just have too many things we still need to do. If we had an open schedule towards the last half of the year, it would have been a lot simpler. Like, oh, we'll put raise three in that segment of the year. But that just didn't exist. So then, yeah, we did have that question of, like, people really want something to do, right? Like, we hadn't released anything since Nightmare. Um, so, like, what can we do? And we didn't really have our capacity since, at the end of the day, our, our, our art team hasn't grown as much as, like, the content dev team is. We can produce a lot of content quickly, but if we don't have the artists to back it up, it's hard to create brand new content. Um, so hard modes were like the obvious answer to that and the only ones that really existed in the game that it would fit was Fosanis because the Fosanis content concept already existed, right? We released Fosanis when Nightmare originally released, but it was just bigger in numbers and solo. Um, so like the concept already existed and the infrastructure, so it was kind of like, let's just make this fight a bit more interesting um, and rework it somewhat, which we did. And then top hard mode was something that people had been asking for for quite a while. Um, like that had been a big request, generally just for the, the dust, generally. I think people just wanted the pets because there's a lot of really cool bosses in there. And top hard mode is the obvious thing to give it from, as well as just an additional challenge. So yeah, it was just kind of like looking at the schedule, what can we actually give? And then we gave it you. Um, Combat Achievements is always on the schedule for a while, although it's supposed to come out in like March originally. That just got postponed a lot. So I didn't really help the whole drought situation either. Um, so yeah, again, it was just looking at the schedule and figuring out like what can we do to make people happy 
Um, it wasn't the ideal solution, but it was all we could really give at the end of the day. Yeah. I think like part of it was that we knew that Rage 3 was coming, you know, and we know that it's going to be amazing, but it wasn't at a point where it was ready to be shared yet. You know, like looking at it now, we have kind of like concept art, we have like rough designs for, for the story, where it's going to take place, all that stuff in place. So if we just said, you know, in January that, oh yeah, we're doing Raids 3, everyone's going to have a thousand questions, but we can't answer them yet. We need something to build on, and then we can share it. So it, part of it was also just like filling that gap in between, you know, we know something's coming, but people want something now so we need to give them something while they wait yeah i think um with the summer summit raids free was like for me it was the bonus thing i i i thought in my head i was like if they like raids free if they announce it i could just tell it was a long way away with everything you guys were working on but i was like it will be the cherry on top of the cake if that is actually coming um and a question I have is, how long has Raids Free been in the works for now? How long have you guys been working on it? Uh, active development, not that long, but in terms of a design, maybe like... There was a really early concept ages ago um, by a couple of Jmods. Like, they, they ideated like this uh, Raids 3 design. But then we, we all got together as like a team recently, like maybe in the past like month or two, maybe? Um, to really formulate proper designs for like the rewards, what the overall raids like, what the unique aspects of it. Just trying to get everything together, which is kind of what we presented in the summer. But obviously, boss designs we didn't present or anything like that. Um, so not too long, but we've had like a couple of devs just working on design here and there, and we've started development recently, like as of the past okay. couple of weeks. But so we've known it, that it, oh sorry, I say we've Go known ahead. that it, we wanted to do it, and it was coming like for before like. 2021 right like like we knew it was coming we knew we were doing it you know i don't think it, we had a, an exact date in but we're like we know that as soon as we get past this the, the current commitments it was there and i think like it's that stupid excuse that everybody like memes now oh covid blah blah covid genuinely slowed down development on our promises we've made already right like it, it did working from home is not easy and people who just go lol just code it's just the same it, it really isn't there i think the biggest thing that's really difficult working from home is the communication side of things right like communication is way slower gets messed up way more often and like there's lots of like secret chats and dms and oh we forgot to tell this person and blah blah and there's lots of little stupid problems that happen work from home and then even on top of like combat achievements were supposed to come sooner but equipment rebalancing got pulled right um and we decided that we were going to rework that and I really, really, really didn't want to put out 350 to 400 odd achievements only to then go, hey, sorry, like these people got to do it with a pre-nerf blowpipe and you guys now have to do it with a post-nerf blowpipe. I mean, you guys saw the drama that came up with even just the Inferno Cape being a, th Inferno Cape being a thing, right? The mm -hmm. blowpipe. Could you imagine if that was tied to the achievements as difficult as you see they are now, you know? So yeah, it just... It would have been ridiculous. So, like, it was like, no, we need to do that, and like that just that slowed down a little bit. And then, obviously, we got clans out, and that was amazing content that like is still not exciting content for people to get their hands into, right? It's just, oh, you made our you made it easier for us to chill out with our friends. That's great, and it was something we needed for Group Iron Man. But it's just exactly what they said. It's all these commitments, and we're just like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And that was where you know, Arcane just said, hey, I've done a cool thing with Nightmare and Ideation. What do you think, Husky? And I'm like. Oh, let's have a look at it. Oh, this is really sick. And then, like, I, I was like, "What if we do hard mode?" And then we were all like, in a group chat <laughs> channel, like, like talking about like hard mode, uh, theater of blood. What if the mechanics were this? And I was just like, "I'm gonna try it and let's make it." And then suddenly, I present to the team three bosses in a seventy-five to eighty percent done state, and it was like, "Yeah, it wouldn't take much. To, this didn't take as long as we thought it did, and we could probably get this out quickly, right?" And it's just, it, it hates to be the whole, "Hey, it's a band-aid fix," but we still know players want it, right? It was just a, a big meme for a while, but hard mode, hard mode, hard mode, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in in reflection, you know, now that you've uh, done the rebalancing and then you you brought out the hard modes and also the combat diaries, did you like? W was it was it the right pacing for you guys? You know, like did it come out the way that you were hoping for? Because f from my perspective, it it actually felt like the pacing was pretty good. You know, like the blowpipe uh, nerf happened and it happened like pretty properly you know in terms of the effect that it had 
uh, in the game, making players wanting to get other items now, like new items, the new bow and all that stuff, and changing, you know, strategies. Like, did it come out the way you guys wanted, I guess? I think I never anticipated, I, like, I could have a pitch for an equipment rebalance that the players were actually excited about, right? Because there was something new to happen with, like, the, the bow for dinner. And I think that, like, the I think my only... Yeah, my only my only regret about the whole thing was the devaluing of people's gauntlet grinds, right? But we didn't really devalue it because I had two choices. I could have made it uh, two drops, both one in 400, or I could have just said make it the longer grind. And the way it's implemented with the trading is anybody who had two still has two. And it felt like the best way to preserve people's time spent because you've got to respect people's time on grinds they've done before. It feels really bad to think I've done... 1,200 kills and I missed out on chances to get an item, right? I think that was the only thing, but with a, with, with the idea of tying it into the crystal armor set and a bow, there wasn't really another alternative unless people wanted more content, which we already like kind of went over. Like We didn't have time to do a new boss just for equipment rebalancing when that would then delay like raids 3, right? <laughs> you know, and all this stuff. So it's just a... I think that was my only concern. Okay. Hmm. Do, do you think... um you would ever create a new boss specifically for the bow to drop um because we had a little idea on a previous podcast we did we were referring to the gauntlet and um i am a huge fan of the corrupted gauntlet and the gauntlet in general <laughs> i i really like it. I hear a lot of, it no it's it's not even just that it's the okay. in my opinion it's yeah. it's something which is end takes you to end game pvm mechanics in such a short amount of time and you can't like you can jump into it and in 10 minutes you're at the boss and it goes from you know just collecting resources to having a battle of goliath and i've always liked that and it also gives me like dungeoneering kind of like vibes and uh we had an idea of maybe if there was like another cave that was there with another variation of the um the who what was it called the hoof oh, yeah. the hunlove the hunlove the maybe maybe cuz maybe it could be like the like, spirit maybe it could be like an epic i don't know cuz the hunlove is like a mixture of like what, what is that thing it's like a deer and wolf and a wolf but i'd say yeah, right? i'd say it was more wolf than deer what if there was like a, another variation a different corrupted gauntlet called something else where it was more of like a deer like some sort of epic looking deer or something like that and it was the similar kind of layout with a dungeoneering fill maybe a few different things and you could actually get the bow through that one and so, then you could get the blade through the uh the hoon leaf cool so we just we, we just we just released top hard mode now we're coming with sani's hard mode and oh we're doing equipment rebalancing let's now release gauntlet hard mode right. there we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, hard mode <laughs> No, but honestly, like, we just want dungeoneering. That's what it is. That's what he's saying. We just want dungeoneering. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, I, 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 I've, I've had a pitch internally, and it didn't go down terribly. It's just, you know, never actually... It's not scheduled. It's not planned. Yeah, it's not yes. It's not even anywhere there for, like, a harder version of the gauntlet that is team-based and bigger, right? As, like, a, hey, could we do this? And, like, you know, there's tons of ideas for content going around internally that some get picked, some don't. Some get reworked into something else, right? And I think this is one of those that's just, like, floating right now and i think it's a cool idea but it comes down to like if you're going to do that system why not just do it somewhere else like it doesn't need to be uh the elves training ground it could be a pyramid it could be a tomb it could be a crypt it could be an underwater thing right yeah like, the idea yeah. 60 floors you know 60 uh, floors with four different themes <laughs> that's good oh my God. and that was the thing that I, that's the thing that's so cool about ideas that get um, seen like that like i pitched um the the hallowed sepulcher as just here's a cool way to do agility that could have been anywhere. It's just we themed it to a crypt in Darkmere because that was the update we were launching, right? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. I have a pitch, since Rakesy threw in a pitch here about the gauntlet. I think it was the same podcast, too. I'm not I'm not too sure, but I had an idea. Kind of like the gauntlet, but this is the raise hype for RuneScape. I'm sorry, it's not really Raids 3, but it's bossing in a way. What if you made it so there was an area, and if you entered it, the only way to go through is you had to beat it, right? But if you died, your whole account got deleted. <laughs> <laughs> would they, like imagine the hype that would bring the RuneScape, like any game, if there was a boss that deleted your account. <laughs> I mean, it sounds cool, like on a 
on a principle level, but like you imagine the difference of like uh like sorry so, sorry Lake, you took four thousand uh kills for a twisted bow and you know ten million nightmare for an inquisitor's mace and then oh sorry you you misclicked once and your account's deleted. Go do all that again. Uh, but what I'm uh, thinking I'll tell is, you we, we... Mm-hmm. just let me like what yeah. I'm thinking is once he does die, I'm sorry Lake, I like Lake. You could like take his tears and you could put oh, on the newspaper and be oh, like gamer spends forty thousand hours. <laughs> <laughs> and it, uh, you sort of watch the world you sort of watch the world burn right yeah so Sorry. i that was awesome um i'm just saying like you could use that hype right on like a newspaper an article or just like that. lake just tearing up suicidal cat that wants to jump out of the uh, third story of the house <laughs> you seem He's pretty angry right there. oh yeah. it's this is this isn't my house. I'm I've moved in with my friend, and uh, the cat's never been here before, so he's not used to like the area at all. And he has been trying to escape now for two weeks. And he like he was right outside, and I'm like on a high floor. So I just I it, like clicked. I was like, oh my god, he ran in. <laughs> that was great, man. Um, we were just I was just talking about the uh, the the boss that would take your account and delete it if you died. As we were talking, about. I was thinking oh. it would bring hype, and he. <laughs> It, uh, Husky said, what if someone spends 4,000 bazillion hours getting a Tebow and he dies of that boss? And I'm like, well, you could sell that news to the, the news stations. They'd, they'd broadcast it and your game would be very popular, man. It's like, isn't that the game that dude cried about? Like, oh my god, that's hard. Yo, Let's go play like, that. <laughs> you know, you know like stream, right? What about just thinking about a boss that instead of you just like having the death mechanics, yeah, you just lost all your gear. So it's like people oh, would obviously yeah. try and do it with like a really low amounts of gear, and then you just get braver and braver, bring more and more, and then you'd end up with the content creators bring in really expensive gear to that I content like that. and it because they got the balls. So that's a that's a sick point. idea. But just imagine there's a hundred of a chance that every time you do die, your account just Stop! <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. No, no, no. Seriously, no. Even RuneScape three had that before because I remember when they released Iron Man with hardcore uh, hardcore mm-hmm. Iron Man. Their version of hardcore Iron Man was actually insane. If you died, you lost your entire account straight up, and and it didn't <laughs> last long because I think it was like only a month or less. Honestly, I remember like. You know, playing at the time, and like people were complaining so much about it. And eventually, they're like, "Okay, sorry, we're, we're gonna actually give you the ability to just become an Iron Man if you die," <laughs> because it was just so hardcore that, like, you know, initially it sounded great, but then when you actually died and you lost your account, it was like, um, "It's not the game for it, really." Like, I, yeah. I think that concept works in other games where you don't sink thousands and thousands of hours yeah. into it. Yeah, it was just too hard. They had to change it. They couldn't actually keep it that way. Yeah, I think it's perfectly paired of a game that you waste thousands of hours on. I think that's a nice uh, pairing. But that's just me. I'm not a J-Mod, right? But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I, mean, I think when there's no can, more modes, you know? Yeah, they could no definitely, more. like, dumb it down and make it a little bit more friendly where you guarantee to lose all of your gear. And then maybe it's a tough boss, so it's like you're kind of forced to take more and more mm-hmm. expensive gear, but there's the chance of losing everything for the sake of killing a boss. Like that could kind of be cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I know Mint just wants accounts to get deleted. So yes, yes, I do. But yo, just think, think. All right, so RuneScape three hardcore Iron Man accounts deleted, and then a couple months later, RuneScape three is like the most popular thing to play. When did that happen? Could they be correlated? Right? Crazy things happening. I don't know. Probably not. But how about even more extreme? You lose your membership if you die. So then you have to resubscribe. <laughs> Pay more money. Dude, even you crazier, you life. get billed and then you got to pay it back in ten monthly payments, dude. So now you're just you think about it the whole year, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, I like that arcade. Thinking about making money, you die. Nope. You gotta you gotta repay us your eleven dollars to uh... continue. <laughs> Yeah, it's like those slot machines. It's like the slot machines where you put a pound for another try. You know, Dude, your oh, membership man. goes up a dollar every every time you die. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were talking about down. raids three. I, I didn't know. Yeah, raids yeah. Three. So I, I think we pretty much have reached the point where we can start talking about raids three because like it, it kind of all leads up to it. You know, like you couldn't have raids three. And so you you know fix the com you know the blowpipe you you know all that good stuff and get some hard modes in to keep people happy for a bit just to build up the anticipation of race three. So race three, you know, it's, it's time. Like it was supposed to be this year. Definitely without COVID should have been this year. And, and the funny thing is everybody knew race three had to happen soon. Like 
you didn't have to be a JMod to know. Like everybody, for, like since last year, it was always like, yeah, uh, Rage 3 is coming out, right? It's like, yes, of course it's coming out. It's been like three years almost mm -hmm. since the last raid. There has to be a new raid. And then it, it came down to like, where will it be? Desert. Everyone says desert. And and guess yeah. what? You guys put out blog and it's like, boom, desert. Like you guys knew this. So it how to, how it how is it? Be. Yeah, what's like the lead up now? You know, so I know I know Arcane. You you design a lot of the items, and honestly, I read it, and uh, a lot of them are very unique. You know, for sure. Like I don't know how you guys managed to create some something very niche, and it works, and it actually still sounds very good. You know, a lot of times niche stuff can be very under my uh, underwhelming, but a lot of these items look very exciting. Though um, I saw somebody play test the the new staff at Ulm. And they could like you know run it and stuff without taking damage, and it was like crazy. So yeah, what's like the thought process now? You know, leading up to it and the design uh, for these items and stuff, the whole shebang. Um. So what specifically is the question? Like, like where are we at right now, or like? Yeah, like in terms of before. Yeah, I guess it's multiple questions. Like the first one's kind of like, what's the current situation in terms of design, and then um, also with these items that you pitch, you know. Like, what's kind of like the challenges that you had to think about and, you know, to consider bringing these items out? Uh, so like we can, how talk, about, we can yeah. talk about rewards quite a lot since the beta has happened and there's probably a lot we can talk yeah. about from there. But um, in terms of where the raids are design-wise, um, so the raid's going to have four paths, four, bo uh, four main bosses, and then like a final boss. Uh, all of those bosses have currently been designed. I'm sure they'll get iterated on dozens of times, but there's like an initial design for all, like pretty much everything right now. Um, the only thing that's not been like completely fleshed out is all of the invocations. Like we have like an idea of what we want the invocations to be and what kinds of invocations it can um, have and how we'll balance them and things like that. But in terms of coming up with a final list of all the invocations, that's not been done yet. Uh, we're probably going to do that closer to the end of the raid because they're probably going to affect a lot of things in the raid themselves and they haven't really been created yet so it makes more sense to come later um but yeah that's underway um in terms of rewards um i kind of just looked around a lot and i play path of exile quite a lot on and off and that's kind of where the low life uh, armor comes from because they use low life quite a lot in that game and um, so it's just like how could we potentially incorporate that into runescape uh, the wand was just an idea I had. It kind of started off as a boomerang because I, I had the idea of like a ranged weapon. It was like a boomerang, and like if you stood further away, then it's like a slower attack speed because of like the travel time for it to come back to you. But if obviously you're closer, then it's faster attack speed. But then it, it's kind of janky. Yeah, I don't think it really works, but it's cool in concepts. But then the whole idea, I think I talked with a husky as well a lot, just about a variable attack speed weapon in general, just that concept. Um, and then settled on the wand. Um, now, so the wand, I, I was hearing about it from my chat. Is that the one that attacks incredibly fast? Yeah, so yeah, it attacks three, three times, two six, and then the, four, the fourth hit is, assuming you attack with three attacks in a row, uh, the fourth hit is like a slower, more powerful attack. Oh, it's like a dragon claw six. spec on a wand. Kind of. <laughs> Uh, I probably would have compared so to different. That. It's so different. Yeah, it's so such a, a little bit of gas yeah. instead of it's just. It's more like blowpipe into like Tebow or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like blowpipe yeah. three hits and then Tebow in the last one. Three yeah, yeah, yeah. hits. Yeah. And then a big. That sounds like. Can you use that on people in the wild? Uh, currently, it's disabled in PvP because of the whole like powered staff, staff scenario where you'd have to be able to use ancients as well as a really high DPS. All right, let's weapon. keep that. Let's keep it um, permanently. Huh? But, but <laughs> I'm saying there is always the potential if PvPers want it, because I think the weapon would be really cool in PvP if we can make it work. But obviously, the damage formula would have to be like completely different. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, there might I'm be a so way down. to like push the damage down enough to the point in PvP where you can use it. It might feel weird, but I think it, I'd rather kind of have this weird damage, like a different PvP formula, and then you guys actually have this new toy to play with. Like, I prefer that personally. I don't know how feasible it is. I haven't really looked into it too much, but I think it's a shame that it's disabled in PvP. Hmm. Yeah. So, I with mean, those three yeah. hits, could you combo it before you do a big hit with like something else too, or does it have to be exactly? Full, full so you could go like three regular and one hits, and then you've got this like big hits uh, charged up. And then you could like AGS, and then they know you've got this like big hit stored up. So then they're like, "Shit, mind he games." Like, that his wand, like because they know they're waiting for it. But then they don't want to pray mage because then you could AGS, right? So then 
they know you've got two really powerful options at that point in time, right? So you and could like double G Maul really and then like wand his ass with a big hit, like you could save it up. Oh yeah, so no! You could go like triple wand into what? You could go triple wand into big one double G Maul, for example. Yeah, um, and that'd be you could do triple wand G Maul, big wand. Then or no, it resets the cycle. No, it'll reset. It yeah, it'll reset after a period of time. But um, okay, so not on equipping. So you'd be able to like you can swap into a different weapon and then attack with that and then swap back to the wand and then get the big hit. Oh, um, so you, you could do loads of crazy stuff. Yeah, How that's wild. The, what what is the spell that comes from the wand? Is it like one of the spells that we currently have, or is it's it something in, completely right? new? It, it's like a sang, right? It's like an in built in thing. Yeah. Ah, okay. You just disappear. So you have to just, oh yeah, you have to charge it with soul runes on the beta world. I think and that's chaos. Great. Yeah. Um. So I have a question regarding raids free. So with the loot system that we've seen in Tob and also in Cox, are we going to be seeing a pretty much identical loot system or is it going to be more varied is it a case of if you do a solo you're guaranteed well not guaranteed but if you do get a drop it's just say one drop instead of a few um or you know are there some changes variations uh something we've spoken about in the past would i like the idea of when you kill like a demi boss before the final boss they're also being like a loot chest or a chance of getting a drop kind of similar to like say tecton and dropping the onyx but maybe something unique to raids so how is the loot system looking in there uh it's not been completely designed it's a lot but it's going to be heavily based off the invocations so the invocations is like a bunch of modifiers you can apply to the raid to increase the difficulty of the raid but also increase the loot potential so that's going to be quite tied in and that's kind of its unique take on it in terms of how like loot's going to be figured out tob and chambers are very very different uh, we haven't decided on that but i'm more leaning towards chambers of Zeric style over tob because tob yep. is like very linear um and i don't think it's too great um but yeah i, I like the ideas of having potentially roles on the demi bosses and things like that um but it's not been completely fleshed out yet okay and the now, layout though it's go for it yeah and the layout's going to be um pretty much stand like a standard layout like tlb or is it kind of you can choose no, different paths yeah it's completely different so you'll like go into like a central room and there'll be like five paths that divert from it uh, four of them will be open at the start and you can do them in any order you want and then after you've done all four of those the final boss will open and you can go in there and defeat the final boss that, that reminds me of an eccentric pokemon gym okay you know what i mean where you gotta like mm. do little rooms and another room and then a boss opens up a little bit uh, yeah so it's like a in between of tob and chambers yeah, yeah. That, was, that was kind of what i was hoping for so that that's cool and you and you also scale this so that it's so low, but you but then someone told me it was not going to be ideal uh, for like efficient drops or something. For, yeah, for so it, solo. it's going to scale one to eight. Like if if we say that Tob scale three to five, like we we know that Tob is soloable and you can also do it duo. But in reality, it's balanced around three to five. Um, this will be balanced around one to eight. But I doubt solo is going to be efficient. It might be. Who knows? Players are usually smarter than us. But <laughs> um. Yeah. It's probably not going to be efficient to do solo because it's going to be a lot more complicated than Chambers. Chambers is very simple in terms of most boss encounters. Don't, don't tell a cold one. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I were to pick up this new raid, and I only have been in the wild, I don't even know what raid two is, right? They, I, they're trying to get me to do it. I, I just have not done it yet. How long would it take for me to learn raid three? I, I can't answer that. It would probably be a, <laughs> a much lower uh, barrier to entry than the uh, TOB, because that's quite high. Because if you wipe, it's over. And if you die, it's so much harder for your team to carry you through it. Um, so it'd be easier in that regard. But it also kind of depends on how many invocations you turn on. You could just turn off all of them, and it would be a lot easier. But your chances of getting dropped would be pretty poor. So if well. someone dies, they can't continue? Uh, it's not going to be as harsh as TOB, but it's going to be not like Chambers, where you can just brute force it. Mm. If you know what I mean, because like yeah. chambers, mm. you can just suicide over and over again, and you will eventually complete the raid. Um, they won't. Be so like yeah, you. So you. The whole invocation thing is the the whole choosing how hard you want it to be. So like, let's say you mm. you you put all of the settings on. Is it like mm. how much harder is that in, relative to the other, you know, raids? Do you think? I, I don't think we can really say at this point, but it, huh. it's gonna it, it's gonna be harder than TOB. Like. 
Oh, okay. It, it might be impossible. Like, if it's impossible, <laughs> I don't actually care. Okay, all right. I think I think that I have an idea now. You if know. you could get you a could team turn of... all of them on, and the combination yeah. of them just makes it like, yeah, this is just ridiculous. Like, I'm okay with that, because eventually so... it'll probably become possible. So, so the whole idea behind this is going to be like, well, in terms of, you know, finding out how to optimize drop rates is that people are going to have to find out what is the best combination of those, you know, settings that you're going to have to turn on. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be tricky. I, I see. And, and there's a yeah. lot to choose from, right? Like, yeah, I think we're hoping to have quite a few. So I'm, I'm currently aiming for maybe like 30 or something. Like some oh, of them will be fairly oh, boring. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Like, some of them might just be number <laughs> changes, but I'm hoping to have a bunch of oh, creative wow. ones as well. Dang, you that's said, that's a ton of custom ability. You said oh, the crap. the mode would be super hard though if all those um <clears throat> settings. Yeah. If we were to clone Wooks into five people, and then have him try to beat the hardest mode, how, would would he struggle? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I mean, so. no, no. well, you made it pretty clear that it's definitely going to be harder than top, and it's near impossible probably to have to have it all on and do it. So yeah, that's good. That's good because I think what. Uh, in general, you know, it, not even like the sweaty Twitter people, just like the people that have done top in general or rates one in general or have like Inferno Capes, they all like hope rates three is going to be easily harder than Theater of Blood, yeah. you know? So, yeah, it seems like it. I hope it's actually mm -hmm. harder than Hardball Top too, like, that, you know, with like the settings higher and, and whatnot. I think so. the thing that's really interesting about Hard Mode Top though is if it was like that on release like say we just released top and top hard mode at the same time people would be going in saying what the fuck is hard mode this is so difficult what the <laughs> hell are jagex thinking but 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 like it's that problem of like hard mode makes you think about seven things at once or eight things at once where top makes you think of five but if you're trying to go into thinking about seven or eight things at once that's really difficult but when you've already mastered the five because you've been doing it for three thousand kills and then exactly. you go into hard mode and we've only added an extra two things or three things it's like Oh, that that's not that hard, right? That that's that's I think the super interesting thing is that like, you know. well, for like the Twitter folks, it's not that hard because those guys speed run it all the time, you know. So it was never a challenge for them. But like for uh, for us normal players that haven't learned the sweatiest and have just because like in a way you have to look at it in two different ways, right? There's like the people that do it with the speed mining run set uh, mindset where they go for speed, so they learn everything down to a science, and then there's the people like me uh, that just do the runs to complete it right and not necessarily care about the time like those people which is, i think is the majority of the toppers will have a hard time actually doing a hard mode top at least you know learning it right like for for a bit i think it's in a right. really good place difficult yeah place, yeah I, I i feel so too because like it, i would wipe every day you know like at least once probably doing a good few hours of it so it's definitely up there but like for the twitter folks it, it'll never be up there for them you know because they've already I think the uh, expectation so and frustration <laughs> behind like yeah. people still just wanted that additional extra huge challenge that took people days to complete, right? Because they kind of missed Tob release and Inferno release, and they just want that experience again. And I I, I kind of do as well because I didn't really play when Tob was released or Inferno was mm -hmm. released. Like I wasn't playing the game, so like I missed all that, and I kind of want to experience that as well. And I think a lot of other people share that sentiment. Um, so it's completely valid to want more, but I just don't think Tob was going to hit that ever. Yeah. And, and with regards to race three and how you can scale the difficulty, right? So like, let's say you don't even have any of that stuff on or you have one on, right? And so it's going to be extremely friendly. You said it was going to be very... Um, in terms of just basic participation, it's easier to get in, right, than Tob. Yeah. So, so I'm assuming the drop rates for that, is that like impossible to get uniques at that low setting? Or, or is that like a very slim chance... That is like I imagine with a no invocations turn on at all, like it'd be like really, really rare. But I, I think it's worth still having a chance. Oh, okay, um, okay, yeah. So so like basically a noob, like oh, you know, like uh and not never zone noob can just kind of go in there and maybe win the lottery or something, is what you're saying. Yeah, it is potential, right? I but see. We could even okay. go one step further and say like Oh, like even if you do hit it, you're not getting like access to like the wand unless you've got at least ten invocations. Yeah. Right. We oh, can, okay, okay. With with the level of difficulty being that granular, we can we can set these thresholds, you know? Uh, and then really make five on to gain access to these uh, rooms, another five to get access to these. And rooms. and each so and the invocation affects the chances equally or something? Or or is it based on like a certain difficulty? It. I think we'd have to look at them individually and be like, yeah, this invocation is a lot harder than this one, so it should probably get more reward potential. 
Okay, so would you guys expl- well when you guys do the blog for that, like you guys gonna talk about like oh this invocation is worth this percent of something, right? We're gonna have uh, an inv- interface that should just show it all. Oh, okay, yeah, because it'll be really like awkward if they you know you didn't, because then everyone would just pick all the easy ones and just assume like oh yeah this is the same thing as picking like five hard ones, you know? I, th- I, I think, think we have yeah. an interface right yeah. now, and like you can select them, and then you have like a reward potential number, and that will show on the party board and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be good because it's so different. This is very different for sure. It's kind of like yeah. it reminds me of Dungeoneering where you can pick complexities, but then they never told you how much more XP you would get for that, but. But yeah, it, it's good to have more, you know, a bit more information on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to say with the items that are coming from Rage 3, because I'll probably try it, but honestly, these items like the wand, that sounds really cool and a little scary for PvP. Uh, but I was always a big fan of the DH set coming from Barrows. I love the low HP play. I don't think you see it in many games. And again, you said Path of Exile has it. I've, I've not played that, so maybe that game does it as well. Uh, is there, I, I was hearing there's a range set that is uh, low HP. Inducing? Yeah, that is yeah. a low life, yeah. Okay. I was just wondering, because I would like to see a mage set as well, but the only thing that scares me is because it's coming from Raids 3, do you do you assume that this range armor set is going to be pretty expensive? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure everything will be expensive. What they set a lot, I don't know. Um, I've got a really idealistic mindset where I'm like, Every end game PVMer is going to want every single one of these rewards. Oh, in yeah. my mind, mm-hmm. they will. But when it comes to reality and people have a finite amount of money and they're trying to pick like which one they'll actually buy and prioritize, that naturally influences it, right? Like you got one bill to spend. It's just kind of like, what are people going to value mm-hmm. over each other? Because if everyone values the same thing, like Tebow, <coughs> right? Where everyone has the one bill and they're going to value Tebow over like every item in the game almost, then it naturally just increases the demand. But eventually, theoretically, everyone should want all the rewards because they all have quite a lot of use and power. Yeah. Mm. And so a trend that we've had through all of our raids so far, and I don't know if you can say this or not, but it's always seemed like the best item from each of the raids we've had, the Scythe and the Tebow, have just coincidentally also been the best in slot to be able to do that content with. So would it be a stretch to assume that the uh, the wand is probably going to be possibly one of the best in slots for maybe the final boss or a boss in there? Yeah, I'm sure we're going to... like. I think people have been suggesting this for a while where there probably is going to be a bit more of a mage focus in this raid just because we've obviously got Chambers doing a lot of range and then this is a lot of mage, uh, a lot of melee for top. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that like the 2-6 style is like really important even like... The idea of being able to hit like three small things with the fast attacks and then using the big attack off the wand on something more predominantly in the room like to make sure you get the most dps out of it like making stuff relevant like that is going to be quite a fun thing to do it sounds mm. really cool yeah yeah mm-hmm. and uh how about like the the punishment system is it the same as 100k if you die kind of thing like if you guys wipe it's like 100k or or is it just like chambers where you just keep going in over and over again I don't think we fully decided on that. I think we uh, want to have some sort of punishment death fee because it's not a safe death. So if he dies a hard crime, man, but then it's like you don't want a hard crime and to be punished, but then no regular accounts don't. So there's there's got to be a death fee in there somewhere. Um, nice. How we do that? Yeah, I don't know. Is there gonna be like yeah. a really small chance? No, no, <laughs> no. no, no. no. <laughs> the account won't be that? deleted. Damn. Damn. Um, but, also, uh, oh, sorry. Go for it, Mr. Husky. I, I the thing is that, like, a lot of the death systems, like the fees to reclaim, were all put in place before the gravestone rework, right? So there's even an argument to say, do we even need to have like a, a set fee for dying, or is it just going to be whatever your gravestone fee is, right? I would be completely up for getting rid of all the current like chests and stuff in game and just making everything use the gravestone system because it's one that scales up your gear while other things don't. It's just a better system, and um, I don't know how people, yeah. like, people would naturally be opposed because then their TOB death fees are now going to be 250k for most of the players if they're using scythes and other Aww. expensive items. <laughs> but um, I do think it would be better. Yeah, yeah. Be very expensive. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Learning the new rate. Yeah, I think get them out. Get get their money out, man. They gotta be paying for this. I like it. 
Yeah, I think Tob is still at a place just based on community interaction. Like, I feel like Tob is still in a place where like a lot of people still say they have a really hard time getting to it. Whereas Chambers yeah. seemingly is so entry level now, you know, for like end game, it's like surprisingly entry now. But Tob still, f to a lot of players, feel like it's not doable. It's such a wall to get yeah. into Tob. The yeah. big difference is that most part chambers of zerg is click the npc and, and you kill it right maybe dodge a couple things like ice demon and oh, maybe vanguard vanguard's right? is scary though because like yeah most you know, people don't do vanguard you know. so you've got all these, and most people don't do vespula right so you, so you end up in this position where like the only really difficult fight in chambers for most people who do it casually is alm and even then you've got like easy sort of like strategies like okay you just need to sit on the mage hand right and like things like that or like yeah. maybe people will learn to run and they'll still like chug like nine brews because they're taking a bunch of damage from stuff they're not properly dodging like the crystals and the rocks and stuff it's just so much easier to get into just because there's so many less things to do but but theater of blood is like a unique fight every single time with complex not complex but like involved mechanics you know like like if you mechanics. just do the wrong thing at bloat you get stunned or you like you know bloat is a really easy boss for most people but like you do just make one step and you die and potentially even wipe the entire team, right? It's so punishing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, it's, it is a step up. Yeah, another I like to be... As well. Sorry, uh, another thing as well is that, like, you can prepare for a new player going into Ulm. You, you'll just make a few extra brews, right? You can't do that in TOB because you have a limited amount of points that you can buy supplies with. Yeah, also, um, I remember when Chambers first came out, though, like, it actually was really hard. But then people found out how to scout. That's when Chambers really kind of, you know, really became a lot easier. Because then you can just pick all the easy layouts and just rush it. So That's the so, thing yeah. I like about this this new raid is there's going to be w different ways you can kill it and in different orders. It's going to be flexible in that way. I think that's one of the cool things about Chambers, right? Is you, you have a different experience every time because you kill the boss in a different order. It doesn't feel like the same raid. It's kind of but the worst thing about Tob. <laughs> but like, it's yeah. the worst thing about Tob, but also the best way from a balance perspective because you don't have players going, oh my god, thieving is terrible. Okay, we're going to buff thieving. I mean, oh no, 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 Ice Demon's terrible. Okay, well, now it's the worst room and it's the one you hate and you've got this sort of minor like differences. Like, Raids three won't have that issue because it is like it, it like it will probably matter which order you kill them in, but like the the rooms are still the same, right? Yeah, like raids one had this. It's just like it, it's cool to have variety, but but I think what's not necessarily cool about raids one is that initially it was you know like pitched as the end game of content, and you could argue that over time it's meant to become easier, but like but like the moment people could just kind of pick what layouts they could do, right? And without any like sort of cost to it, right? It it, it was basically that's when when raids one became extremely easier. Mm -hmm. Just cause, yeah, like all the noobs can just do skeletons, shamans, those <laughs> those layouts to all, right? And you can also sit out, but there's just a lot of things, but especially the whole scouting thing. It, I think it has it was a double edged sword, you know? Especially uh, to the item prices and stuff, you know? Because Rice is just having flashbacks. Yeah, how, how I don't know. How many times have you done raid? <laughs> how many times have you done raid? I think raid three is is a good balance because it's a mix of like top and uh yeah raid one. Rice, you got a number right? It must be a couple thousand. Yeah, yeah, a done. couple thousand. Yeah. Oh my, yeah. oh my god, dude. Yeah. Um, Husky, you were talking about there's different ways to fight the bosses in raid three. I'm wondering, are we gonna be seeing a tank class? And if so, will the bulwark have any? <laughs> Oh, anything to good do with question. That. I like it. Trying to get your merches in early, right? You know, <laughs> hey, dude, I'm never selling, baby. <laughs> He's holding. He's holding the door. Uh, I think it's. I think it. I'm not sure if you saw like or remember the the changes that are going to be made to the dins as like as part of the. Oh, the I remember. Trust and, me. Uh, uh, about, mo mostly about it actually being like a a way you can stack defense and have okay damage. Mm -hmm. I mean right now I think it sits as like you do more damage than if you sat there with a Zami Hast and an Ellie, but like obviously like you're gonna be taking a bit more damage than if you had that setup because Ellie's ridiculous. Um but I still think that idea is cool. Um I I think we don't really know the ins and outs of what's gonna be for specific roles in a lot of the rooms. At least I don't, right? Because you know arcane's the designer on that and i'll let him stay quiet or whatever but he's planning but i think that the idea is we now do have a a new option that wasn't there before and i think personally it'd be cool to use it but also i'm aware that like a lot of our loot systems have like if it's like 
points based on how much damage you deal to a boss. Unless you're using the best DPS setup, players aren't going to care. So it only works if you force people into that role, maybe. And then even then, is that a good idea? It's well, just really you, hard to tell. Could you add a points for how much damage you have taken, right? You could have a, a tank, <sighs> uh, a bullet sponge, pretty much. Yeah, because you could do lots of cool and interesting things like that, but how do you balance it correctly? Because then if it's too good, everyone wants to be the tank role, and if it's just right, like maybe that's okay, but like it's... Balancing is always the problem, something. right? Yeah, you yeah. probably have to do something like you have a minimum contribution of like hits taken and hits given, right? But then you'd also have like a flat, a flat score, so as long as you hit that minimum bonus for that rune, like everyone gets that score, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, that'd be nice. So, so, so at that point, like it doesn't matter if you're DPS or tank, like you both earn the same as long as you hit the minimum contribution. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we might actually be seeing some more uses for the uh, the bulwark coming up. Then is what I'm kind of hearing, just a little bit. I'm getting my hopes a little high here. Uh, I think me and Rakesy agree that it would be really cool for a tank role to exist. Like your main mission is yeah. just to stay alive. You're taking that much damage. You can't even focus on attacking. You're Eating, I, yeah. prayer flicking, crying, that kind of thing. I think I think it is one of the things that's kind of missing from PVM, well, group PVM as a whole, especially raiding content. And like when I think about a lot of other games, it's like you have you know your DPS role, your tank, your healers, and so forth. And I, I feel like we have those mechanics in old school. They're just not very well utilized at the moment because there's not that much need for them. So something we discussed a while back was in Raids 3, if there was like a, a need for a tank role, it's like, hey, how about we utilize Lunars and we actually see, see Hill Weather being used in like a coordinated way by a team? Because like Lunars is effectively like the healing class or mage book of old school RuneScape. But at this point in time, there isn't really a boss that pushes you to the point where you need to, like, use it. And, uh, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you've already designed the bosses or are working on it, but, like, I would love to see something like that. It, it would be refreshing to see DPS not being the best and only way to be able to, like, push through content and having to, like, tactically work with people. But I'm assuming that's not the case because it is a soloable raid. And if that is the case, I'm just guessing you probably don't need to be that coordinated with other people if you can well, solo you could, it. You could flick the bulwark, I'd assume. Like, if it really needed to yeah. be, and there was, like, say, this big thing coming at you, just flick it on. and PKers do it, yeah. so why couldn't PVMers do it, right? It, that's the difficult thing in our game, though, right? Is that, like, our identity at old school is you can be anything, right? Like, that is old school as a game. You can level up in, at your range skill, you can level up your mage skill, you can level up your melee skill, right? Or your combats and stuff. And most games make you pick. Like, like, like I think the, of, to go with the obvious comparison, like World of Warcraft, you pick whether you're a mage or a warrior, blah, blah, blah right? Mm -hmm. And that does make it slightly harder because players can do everything. And I think the big one that's, like, understated is you can switch combat like equipment and gear in our game and i'm pretty sure you can't in that game like you can swap weapons and shields but that's it so just the fact that you can go from being a super lightweight magic setup to like justishar in like 0.6 seconds really <laughs> does like change a lot i know there was an effort at least when we did the original nightmare to say like there's some value in tanking because we expect it to be this huge mass boss and it picks the person with the highest defense like to focus on but it just never really works out the same because in a big free-for-all situation you don't want to be the tank you're never getting loot and in a group of like five people you're probably good enough like that you don't need a designated tank to take like damage and like it's that also weird thing where the melee attacks dodgeable or prey against anyway so it doesn't really matter but i know there was like a thought to like this could be cool if it focused the target with the highest defense i think uh, trb did a really good job uh, exploring how roles can be done in runescape mm -hmm. Like, you do have major roles and ranger roles and melee roles. Tank mm -hmm. roles, not so much. Like, tanking a Verzik, it's not really... You're not a tank, you're just walking slightly yeah. differently. Um, but I think it did a pretty good job overall. Um, I'd like to explore more, but yeah, it it's very hard to do it without forcing it. Like, you effectively have to force it to be a thing in RuneScape for it to be a thing. Uh, yeah. It can't just be this like slight optimal thing because it just doesn't work. Like heal other is like a really good example. Heal other is also already as it is right now a really efficient spell to use. Like if you're like so Zeg or like Verzeg or something, and you like actually use heal other, you have a, a like a decently significant amount of like net positive health 
and then all of your allies don't need to eat, so then they're actually saving ticks themselves, like not actually having to eat food. So it already is technically an efficient thing to use, but it's so marginal, it's just not worth the effort. Like the coordination yeah. and like bringing the spell and runes and stuff, just like, can't be asked. But like you just don't bother. But it's technically already efficient, but it needs to be so forced and like, yeah, this is really good and amazing, but you make it amazing and then all of a sudden it's abusable and then just try to trivialize his content like Halo there before its rework recently did. Because it just generated hundreds and hundreds of health. Um, it's, it's hard. <laughs> in our game. There, there, there is a cool use case for it, though. I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen like the mega scale, 100 scale like CMs. They uh, yeah. specifically have people sitting in like just a shower. Like, for example, like tanking the Rangers, uh, the Deathly Rangers for like the rope room. And like these people, these things hit like 90s because CM is just let's bump the numbers up a bunch and then make it scale to. You have to have that damage reduction, otherwise you, you, just you die. literally <laughs> you because they hit 90s and the the most you can heal is like a a shark brew um shark brew caramblan. It, you just can't out heal it even in full justice R. So you have like people dedicated to heal other just to pump enough hit points in them before the next attack comes. Stuff like that <laughs> makes it feel like a real raid. Like, but like yeah. As you, as you said, like it's it's literally only forced because the opposite is just you die, right? You just take so much damage it would be impossible otherwise. Um, but I, well, it, it's such a cool concept. I mean, I love the idea that there's a heal tank combo. Like I could just see raids three getting really big and the hardest mode you actually need this maybe. And then there's just certain amount of people that are just so good at the healing and tanking, and maybe they're just in Discord and they have crazy communication. One dude's like doing tick perfect heal others. Like camp and PNX and full justice char and a bulwark, and then they're sought after by everyone who doesn't want to learn that, right? I, that's just me. Like, it's like, oh, we really need to do the hardest to get the best loot. Can't do it with five attackers. We gotta, we gotta pay this dude a couple mil an hour. Just that good. Like, I would love to see people just specifically getting really good at just certain roles, just kind of like League of Legends in a way, so that they're uh, they make a name for themselves. Community. I don't know. I that's think that would be cool in general. It's just really hard to make our game hard. Because <laughs> our game is such know. a fucking science. Like, it's so precise, but also not. Like, you have so much time to think between ticks compared to, like, other video games. It's so lenient and precise, and people have just got it down. So the game kind of needs something completely different if you want to, like, push that. Yeah, stuff. like, what, I what guess... if we, like, evolve combat? <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. Can we add a grand exchange? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing with ticks is, you yeah, know, you're limited to point six seconds. Wait, yeah. which is still a lot of time. EOC but, comes right. back. Let's get it. But like, well, you can see where the yeah. other game went with this, right? Because we've gone the complete opposite of like, let's make these so precise. And I think that's the thing I both love and hate about our game is. Like, in, in, a, in another game, you'll never have stand on this exact square. You'll have stand in this general area, and it's usually quite lenient. But like, There's so much refinement in that, right? The player, like, the player can be on an exact coordinate, right? And do a specific action at an exact 0.6 second interval. Other games are way more granular, and that just gives, like, so many more options to us in our game. Um, and I think the biggest thing that, by the way, stops the whole healing thing being actually useful is, like, the loss of, like sort of like unit frames to see people's health around you, right? You imagine like healing would probably actually be quite strong for a clan to do in a dead man multi, but the reason they don't do it is because there's no real good way to target your heals to a specific group of people and see that they're low health and target them only and all this sort of stuff going on. So you'd end up with a bunch of people just spamming it, but then is it just better to DPS instead and kill the opponent because they're doing damage to you and you've got a limited amount of supplies? But I think you could absolutely see like a healing roll if it was just really yeah. easy to see. You could like it's add a book right. from the raids three drop table, and then it could allow you to heal specific people if you have the book. Oh, just take it out loud I'm, there. Yeah. I'm just like imagining a healing chinchampa that you throw at your clan <laughs> to heal them in an area effect. Everyone wins <laughs> with a chinchampa. Uh. Nice. And so cool. I, I'm I may be jumping the gun a little bit here, but um. For raids four, uh, <laughs> have we considered maybe the Tazar area? Because uh, I love that area and what you guys have done with the Inferno. And I think if there was a, a raid in there one day, I think that could be so, so cool. Underwater raid. Come on, man. Oh, the Tazar's already we... gone updates, man. The Tazar's already oh, gone a lot of. I mean, they could do that on Fossil Islands. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna... 
I, I actually have a super left field idea for Raids 4. Ooh. Oh, yeah, right. say it. Say it. Really no, it's right. probably going to happen. No, no. I'm not going to tell it, but I have an Can idea. we guess? Can we guess? Oh, come on. You can guess. I'm not saying anything. Oh, Yo, man. just bring out Dungeoneering, honestly. Is, it, is it in the wild? <laughs> Spot the PK in the call. I want people's items deleted, and I want people to be in the wilderness. <laughs> is there going to be a small chance? <laughs> uh do you know, oh, so we have a lot of talk about like raids and stuff like this, but is there ever if is there ever any conversation at Jagex with like expansions to God Wars? Because I know that you know RuneScape Three have like the Outer God Wars and God Wars Two. I'm not too sure if they that's the God same Wars thing. 3. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. God Wars Three is like an actual like uh, lore sequel. You know? Oh, that's cool. Because yeah. I mean, like old school RuneScape and RuneScape Three, it's kind of like the same universe but at different a different timeline i guess so different time uh, period yeah, yeah. Is, is there any talk about any god war expansions or any future god wars i think it's been talked about i mean we all know there's like a door there right like between yeah. the four general rooms and we know that rs3 is doing it um but i think we also tend to want to avoid doing something at the same time as they are so for example um, you know, we have Prif. We got it a while after they got Prif. Many years uh, after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Um. So it, I would say, God Wars three was it? It's quite recent. Yeah. Um. So I personally would want to wait a little bit before doing something like that. But we don't even have God Wars two. You know. We yeah. Need God Wars <laughs> first. What? Well, we do have a God Wars area in the wild that we could definitely expand on. See, I kind of I mean, isn't that, like a small chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of wish. Like, what were you saying, Husky? I just kind of wish players got to see like what goes on in ideation and stuff because people are like, oh, has it ever been spoken about? Has it ever been done? And there's tons of crazy ideas. Like I'll just I, like the other day I just grabbed like Elena and RK and Nicole and said like. Oh, how cool would this be? And they were like, "Oh my god, we could totally make that happen." And does it go anywhere? Who knows? But that's like the one of the best things about working here is just like coming up with cool ideas, or like even just like like people meme about Reddit. But sometimes there's an idea that gets the top, and you're like, "That would actually be pretty cool, right?" You know, like someone put a lot of effort into thinking this through, and and it, maybe nothing happens of it, right? But I like it's just honestly like a really sort of creative just sort of out there atmosphere and i think that's the one thing that like i kind of re regret about our raids three is that like everybody said raids three will be in the desert everyone said it will do it and then we ended up doing it i'm just thinking we have been like, a little bit more play. creative like hey, could, we could we have gone it. somewhere still time the desert is creative because it hasn't ah. had anything i mean yeah. the thing is, is there a reason for it not to be in the desert and you know there's all it's that lore and dark spaces yeah. around the desert to fill in and stuff that's like it yeah. makes a lot of sense it needs a lot of sense. i would like to see it between being predictable and doing things like either rs3 or what the community have been saying for years and just going completely left field if the community's um, been saying it for years there's probably a good reason to do it as well right yeah you know what i'd like to see it at outside the dark wizard pit of varak dude so as soon as you, you go into varak the first time you just see this huge dungeon right i love games that do that where it's like you're playing a game and you just walk <laughs> past end game content and you're like how in the hell do i even do that i'm out here killing goblins but i, I guess mean, the desert's cool it's... they they already have that in a sense it's like if you're a new player and you walk by that mighty yew tree you try to click that <laughs> thing and it's like 60 wood cutting what the hell it's gonna take weeks i i guess so man i guess so not not in the high end PVM content, but I did, I did yeah. see those trees, and I was like, "Damn, I do want to cut those down." When I was growing up, I feel yeah. Like I mean that that's always it, it. Almost gives you something to aspire to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's like something that you look at and you're like, "I want to do that one day." That it would be a good wonder. Sign. It's just wonder. It's like you like just like when I was growing up in the wilderness, and my friends brought me out there, and I'm just seeing people die left and right, and I'm seeing these spells I've never seen because I was a very slow kid. I was just my brain is just. <laughs> Whoa! Awesome! And then I just never went back until 2014, oh. right? Like 10 years, because I was a big noob. But I just always had that wonder about the wilderness. I just watched that guy die to a fireball. How do you even launch that? So, I love games that do something like that. They just incorporate something crazy. Even if you can't touch it, it's there. and You could just constantly see it, right? 
always there when you're grinding. Aspiration yeah, content. content. Yeah. Well, you have you have like Twitch and stuff nowadays, though. So you can mm -hmm. see it. Yeah, I know. It, I know. When it comes to implementing uh, new content into the game, um, how how closely tied does it have to be to the lore? Do you guys find is that something that is like widely taken into consideration, or is it just a case of if you have a really good concept, it's like well, we can kind of make it work. I think it really depends on what it is. Like sometimes the content you could probably just be like it doesn't fucking matter, but for something like a raid, I think it's really important. I think yeah, I think RuneScape at its core, and people will meme about space barring through quests, is it's a very story driven game right it like it's so much it's got so much more character in its stories and i just feel like that that is so important to like make sure that you can he adhere to in times now a lot of it will be like okay the lore doesn't work for this so let's think of a reason why it could right let's inject another dynamic and it's not like you can you know go a complete 180 on things but you can build on and add layers right um it's like actually um a big like storytelling thing is that like um i play a lot of dungeons and dragons as a dungeon master right and and you get to like it's like you'll just drop something to play like give something to the players like early on and they're like oh what's this mysterious thing and you don't know but you've given them a mysterious thing and then you call back to it like eight sessions later and they're like oh my god you've been planning this the entire time and you're like <laughs> yep yep i have and that's kind of how i feel like it, it just generally because it's, it's an ever-evolving game and we don't know what we couldn't tell you our next updates for the next five years right but we can drop seeds and we can say, and let's do this. And what if that'd be cool? And, you know, sometimes you see an idea developer left that like worked on the game 10 years ago and you're like, I'm going to spin it into this thing because, well, I'm here now and they're not, right? Could, <laughs> could you give us a seed for five years in the future for World War Escape? Just a little seed. There's already loads. The game's later than them. Yeah. I just, I want a seed for 2025. That's like four years away, right? That's... I, I can't even imagine what RuneScape would be like back then or in the future. I think even like Below Ice Mountain had like so many like small things done to it that kind of hints at stuff that could happen in the future at some point. Okay. All right. So that's a seed right there. Okay. That is, there's a couple of seeds in there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know what's happening. There's a mysterious pit or something and voices uh, come from it. Ed, Ed, Ed's, Ed's mind. Racy's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> developer to see what they're planning with that because you can't keep on track of everyone's updates right but yeah That's yeah you, cool, you said there was like 15 developers so I guess you guys aren't always you know in touch with everybody you, you know you can't right yeah you keep track of what 15 people do every two weeks and you're gonna That's miss your job months. then <laughs> right I think <laughs> it's actually something, to do that. It's actually yeah. something that because we are like so like knowledge about the game we actually get a lot of criticism for like you keep trying to be involved in too many things you need to step back right <laughs> as like feedback that we get a lot you yeah know? you guys just you guys just haven't reached like the marvel's end game status yet with all your uh content developers <laughs> one day moved. one day you guys will unite into like one whole cohesive thing but yeah it's crazy there's so many people so i used oh, I, I used to follow the J mods. yeah I have a, an end game question for all three of you J mods here. So the way the old school RuneScape is currently going, it almost seems like there needs to be something next and then something beyond that for the game to continue. Um, how do you guys see the game eventually ending up? Do you think that there will ever be a time in old school RuneScape's life where it will get to like the top of the totem? the top of the mountain, the top of the pillar, whatever you want to call it, where it's like, there is just so much for everybody to do that it's like, all it will involve is tweaks to certain pieces of content. Or do you guys see it as a continued uh, progression of adding new things over the years? Or do you think maybe one day it will reach the top? How do you guys picture RuneScape like that? There's always something atop the mountain in front of you, right? You know, there's always another view to see, another valley to explore, another piece of the world that has yet been uncovered. That's always how I see things, right? It's just people, people are people remember the experiences of the things they've 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 gone through, but like, and they always look forward to the next thing. And that's our job as content creators to provide the next thing, you know. 
It's pretty much how I see it too. (laughs) That's like the spirit of an MMO, right? Like there's always something more to do. I don't think RuneScape's gonna peak anytime soon, you know? Like we just keep adding content and people always want more content, so. Looking at it from a business perspective, like why would Jagex stop? Like, where's the benefit in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. No, Agreed. that's that's absolutely fair keep enough. Producing content. Keep, um, keep going. Racy, <laughs> Rice, we are two hours and twenty four minutes in. One of the longer podcasts we have done. Uh, I think we covered most of what happened during the summit. Do we have any closers here that you want to touch up on before we end? No, I think we've got everything. You know, we talked about uh, demo Mo group Iron Man race three, and and other stuff in between too. You know, like oh, yeah. The you know? uh-huh. Yeah, I, I'd say we covered pretty much everything here. Uh, I would like to just say a big thank you to all three of you for coming on. I know that you guys have probably been working on the game all day. So thank you for taking time out of your evening to stay on till 11 p.m. at night to talk about RuneScape some more. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I wasn't expecting to have all three of you today. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs> uh, you yeah, this was so unexpected. And, and then, yeah. sorry, Husky, for hijacking your spot. I mean, you have the spotlight alone, and then we just come along. It, it, it's been so much fun because, like, like I'm, I'm like friends with like these guys, like at, at work, and it's great. And it literally just came up, like, oh, I'm on this thing tonight. They wanted to speak about Raid Three Rewards, but they probably need you, Arcane. He's like, oh, I just come on. And Elena's like, yeah, why can't I come on too? <laughs> hey, don't leave me behind <laughs> keep spreading the word we'll have as many amazing jmods as possible to talk hey, about if you, if you don't honestly know, you don't get <laughs> yeah no honestly though if any other jmods from other departments want to talk about their specialty and stuff oh yeah we we probably love to have them because it's always cool to learn about the different you know departments and what what they actually do like what do they bring what do they offer to the game you know and stuff like mm. that's always cool. You're best off just asking them. Fruit. Yeah. Fruit, man, we will. If you know any. <laughs> I, I think we might have to try to poach Mod Ash at some point. I think, do you know what? I think maybe if one day we reach 10,000 subscribers on this channel, we'll get Mod Ash on. That's should we just, should we just fly plan. over? I feel like the only way to do is we just all fly over and bombard him. <laughs> set up yeah. a table outside we'll just camp, we'll camp outside his house, man. <laughs> No, we won't really do it. We won't really do that, but it would be great to have him on. 10K yeah. subs, 1,000 likes. Thank you very much for coming on, guys. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Um, promos. You guys want to promo anything? You know, Twitter. We'll leave the we'll leave their links down below, like always, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Pl- play Dead Man Reborn. If you've never played Dead Man before, it's a whole new spin on it. If you like leagues, there's sigils like relics. Um, and if, even if you're not playing on competing, just say. Set yourself a fun goal. I want to make the strongest level 35 or level 70 character I can and just have a blast. It's supposed to, yeah, just hopefully, I don't know, shake up the way you play the game, you know? it's. I want to get really rich. I want to, like, rush to the highest level and then get, like, a tier 3 sigil and then sell it and just, like, roll it in money and then it's like... <laughs> Bond money done. <laughs> I agree. And, and tell me what you think about hardcore. I'm, I'm curious to know what more people think, you know? Like, how should it work? Yep, the, the group hardcore. hardcore yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, the group hardcore. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Put that in the comments, boys. 